Season two, boys. Let's yeah, go. Really. We're good, man. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Touchline Podcast, season two, episode 55. If you're new here, hit the like button, hit subscribe, comment down below. As you can see, we're not in our normal setting. This is our permanent setting now. This is the new Touchline studio. Boys, it's what do you think? Good. What do you think of it's it? Well, good, man. Fresh. Let us know in the comments what do you think of the new studio. I'm gonna put a little cinematics. I'm sure you've already seen it at the start of the video. Yeah, um, yeah boys, what do you it's think? Looking of the new good, studio? man. Loving it. We have got the neon lighting here, Ronaldo, uh, UFC, Alexander yeah, Von Nos, everywhere, everywhere. It's mad. It's mad. We, 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 we just <laughs> had to. We just had to add everything that we love in the sports world from the UFC to looks the soccer fresh. to- Very clean. Yeah, it actually does look fresh. It looks clean, man. I just love the set out, literally. Like after all that renovation that we did- We struggled for a while. We actually did, like yeah, for what? Still, it's still for not about two, months. three months, two easy. Months. Yeah, it's especially so. just like makesh the makeshift studio. Yeah. And but now there's still bits, of bits and pieces. And we're back to our original sit. That's how we started. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Back to our original nah, you know what? Actually, no, I was sitting on the end, that's right. No, you were just in there. I was sitting on the left side, because I remember when we had the television on the left side right next to me on the edge. Yeah, yeah. But but, uh, it's good, if man. you've heard it, it's a touchline takeover. It's that's a touchline it. takeover. We're taking over, baby. <laughs> we're taking <laughs> over. That should, that should be our slogan. A touch I think that's takeover. what we, that's what hashtag, we call it. Hashtag the touchline Double takeover. T. Double yeah. T. Double T. What'd you first of all? What'd you get up to over the Christmas break? Uh, didn't go on a Christmas break this year. Yeah, you usually yeah, do. I hey? usually do, but just at home. Doing a lot of podcasts, TikToks yeah. and all that. So yeah, it was a good break. Make sure you go follow our TikTok. Uh, it's Links are in the description. It's on the screen right now. And we're uh, hitting 5,000 followers yeah, already. 5, so and not to mention that. And uh, we're also almost hitting 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. So make sure so again, 700 subs at again, the moment. Again, right hit the subscribe button. Yeah. This Get us the right goal. We want to go like, <laughs> We want to go hard. Oh, like. we gotta, we gotta do the skydiving thing. That, yeah, so uh, uh, that's what we said few uh, about a month ago. If we hit, so a, a, if we hit a thousand subs, we have to do us four skydiving. Yeah, skydiving. skydiving. So we'll if see. anyone wants to see us, we're we, we gonna do it. <laughs> we're so do if it. anyone wants us that's to do the skydiving, problems. please make sure. Um, subscribe to our channel so we can hit a thousand subs because yeah. I'm actually excited about this. So yeah, yeah, I'm really the first good. one ready it's to go good. for it. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure the fans <laughs> want to see it. I know all the fans want to see it. What, They're about gonna you, gonna what about you doing on your own? Just for the boys. I'll do my own. I don't care. Stop, <laughs> stop being a wuss, Shuggle. Yeah, you're we'll actually a wuss. I can tell right, by your reaction. We'll, we'll see how it goes. When right. it okay, we'll, we'll talk about it then. Anyways, we'll get into it. Let's get into League Talk, the first League Talk of 2024. We are, this is about, I think about six, the 16th time. Six times. Yeah, I've probably said it a lot. Millions of times. Lawai, Lawai, Lawai. But anyways, it's officially a done deal. Yeah. Jerome Lawai signs with the West Tigers. In 2025. Um, all, you've all heard our thoughts about this. Um, yeah. Yeah, what do you think about this officially happening? Look, we all saw this coming. It yeah. was either, we've said it all over again, Bulldogs or Tigers or Dragons. He's chosen Tigers, of course, money talks. He signed for Tigers that are rebuilding, Benji Marshall. He said a few things about him, he's happy. And even Luan in that press conference, he said in, in regards to what Ivan Cleary said about him, that uh, that he's not worth the money, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So look, it's a good move. I would not take him at the dogs. I don't think he's the best player, but for Tigers, I think it's a good signing. They need a, a marquee signing and yeah. Luan yeah. is that marquee signing. And Benji was the reason why he, he selected Tigers. Um, but would it work out? Personally, I feel it, it could go either way. I feel because of how good he's been at the Panthers, but then you can think about it or have the Panthers been like helping him out. So like really yeah. Cleary's been really the one that's been leading Panthers. So the only concern is that I feel why when he gets to Tigers, his real talent might be exposed. Like he might yeah, not it could be happen. the best yeah. it, they, they, there's, could happen. there's talent there, no yeah. doubt there about talent, it. Yeah. Um, he proved that at the Panthers, mm -hmm. but just judging, my, my thing is just judging by that grand final, how they had to take him off to win that grand final. Yeah, yeah. that's right, without him, me. yeah. It but says he that he's not a million, yeah. He's injured too, yeah. I get it. But in a way too, like he was just starting to, in my opinion, was starting to not fall off, but wasn't Luai's best yeah. when yeah. just in the past, last considering last season. But um, yeah, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's the solution for- Look, yeah. In regards to what Sammy said, uh, that you don't think he's gonna perform at Tigers because without Cleary, but yeah. when he first bursted into the scene, yeah, he, was, yeah, he yeah. was really good and he wasn't without Cleary for a yeah. while. So I think putting that, what you said about Loire, I think he does have potential. I do think he's a good player, but is he gonna work at Tigers considering they're still rebuilding? Mm. Yeah, that, That's a big question mark and we have to wait and see. What yeah. like yeah. We've seen that the dogs, we've seen it before. Like signing big players are not gonna get you into the eight. Exactly. It will, over time, but no, it it's, takes it, time. Signing one player is not going to get you in. Look there. how yeah, many exactly. players we've signed. We're still struggling. Yeah, 
Exactly. So that's what I'm talking about you lie to Tigers. Oh, look, look, I've said it dozens of times about Jerome Loy. Look, I know he's a good player. I know he picks up like on the on the field like and he has like a lot of good skills and everything. But for me personally, going to a different club yeah. and like making the biggest move for his not just for himself, but for his family life as well. It's gonna be very, very difficult. But on that level when he's gonna play I'm not too sure. It's going to be very, very tricky for him. Like I think, like how you said, Sam, he could be exposed, and people are probably going to say bad things about him, and and he's not he's like good. used to it. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to take him a, a bit of a time to gel in properly, getting to know the players, getting to know the coaching staff. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Time. There's I've a lot of things involved behind the scenes, not just on the field, but outside the field as yeah. well. I've got a funny so feeling that him and Brendan Wakem will work well together. They, they do you could, think so? I do yeah, think they, they, do you think I they have could a work? gut feeling that they could work together. I feel they're similar players. I just don't feel But they they're just a different- um, I feel they're yeah. quite similar players. Because you look at Wakem did have a quite a decent season last year. But yeah. they're both sixes. Yeah, yeah, that, that's Wakem was seven. I don't think they'd work together. Isn't, He'll be, um, isn't Wakem leaving? I heard, I, yeah, I heard the rumours about it. I saw that on the website this morning. I think he's gone. I think he's gone. So maybe it's Sullivan. Sullivan. Sullivan is the 5'8". With Sullivan. a halfback, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Okay, it's yeah, yeah, so they yeah, could yeah, okay. they could switch uh, Sullivan it is, uh, yeah, it is to Luai. Oh, wait, wait, Aiden, Aiden, Aiden Caesar was beginning yeah, about. I forgot about that. Yeah. So oh, that's actually, a, a decent that. combination. That could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wakem left. Um, but they're talking about Tigers. Yeah, Justin Olam, I think uh, was released yesterday. Yeah, he signs in a swap deal from the Storms to the Tigers on a three year deal. With Sean, what's his name? Sean. His last name. Who Olam? Who we swapped with? Yeah. Um. To go to Melbourne Storm. I actually had it on the phone just off camera. It's Penal, I think someone like Penal, that. Yeah, regardless, yeah, regardless the big name is Justin, Justin, Justin Ollum. Justin Ollum is going to step up a lot of you, man. Um, what do you think about that? Ollum, when he burst into scene, he was a very good player. Yeah. Um, but then again, his last year especially, like yeah. it was a very, very bad season for him. He got yeah. dropped by Bellamy. <laughs> and I think he's just, Bellamy doesn't, probably favour him anymore. There's a lot of good centers coming up with, for the Melbourne Storm. So I think it's a right move for the Storm and Olam to just, you know, start fresh, you know, because you see a lot, not just Olam, but you see like Luke Brooks, um, you see Sullivan, like a lot of players are who have stayed at the club for a while are just leaving the club, you know, just to start fresh because they want a new chapter. Yeah. And with Olam again, he's a very good player. I think at the Tigers, it can work out with him. Yeah. But, it's again finding that form, finding his feet because if he doesn't, he could probably like, it could be the end of his NRL yeah. journey. Yeah. Like play, but his form yeah. wise, like just playing for the sake of yeah, exactly. like having that talent. Look, to uh, look, I'm a big fan of Justin Olam too. Like he, he's actually stepped up. I know he's like, he got dropped last year, which I understand. And he had a bit of injuries as well before, yeah. but that's a good move for him to go to Tigers, a new chapter, a new beginning. Yeah. So he's gonna probably step up and bring his own experience yeah. into the team yeah. to, yeah. to help right. the young squad yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah. they can help each other out. Nah, for sure. Makes sense. There was this prediction uh, you just showed me before the pod about the lineup heading to the season. Yeah. And their back line isn't the strongest. Yeah, They've got it's not the strongest it's, at all. Yeah. Yeah. Quite yeah. decent, but I think you, like you mentioned that the experience will, is what he will bring to the team. And I think that's what their backline lack. I think their forward pack is very strong. They got good forward Koa pack. Yeah. you've got Klemma, Utkumanu, it's- Alex uh, Twal. Yeah, it's they're, a strong back um, forward their pack. Their team's starting to shape up. Olam now is a good, uh, as I said, a good addition. Coruscant's been there for a year. Papali's been there for a year. Um, who, who we just spoke about, um, Luai is gonna join there. So this is the rebuild you want for Tigers. So they just gotta be patient. And just, just yeah, be patient. And the time will come where the Tigers yeah. will definitely- To get some wins as well for this yeah, year. Yeah, they've got something so. different that from any other centers they've had in a while. Yeah. Yeah, I Olam, think they've had Talal, he had hasn't been good. Robert. James yeah, Roberts yeah, he's in been on and off lately. So yeah. I think Olam coming from a team like Melbourne, he's gonna teach the team a lot and he's gonna help the Talal, team. Talal has yeah. become Potential, a better team. But again, he's young and he's had a few injuries. So ACL, he had one recently. Again, uh, Tigers look promising. They do. Um, no doubt about it. Yeah, they, yeah. they, 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 will, they, they be, will step up. They will they be will a top up. eight side. They, they will, will be a top eight yeah. in, the, in the next five years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they maybe, maybe longer. Uh, <laughs> maybe in the next two, three years, I, I would say. I really two, feel Benji years, yeah. is the right man. I, I think so. I think it's gonna nah, work out. I, I think it's I don't think so, man. I feel like the Benji experiment will fail. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna agree with you on that. Like Benji was a great player, no doubt. Yeah. And I'm sure he's good amongst the boys, considering he's still a young coach. Yeah. And when you're a young coach, you're considered one of the boys in a way. But in another way, I don't know, hopefully he works out, but something tells me he's not gonna be a great coach. Yeah, something, something about it, like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right for him, like in that position to like become a coach. Like he's been to that type to get angry. 
do you see Benji as that type of You manager? don't have to be angry. No, of to course. Be a great coach, There's different types of management yeah, skills yeah, you can have. Yeah. But then you want him to be a coach that but he loves the club. puts fear in the players. You don't want to be a friend. Exactly. Don't be too much for that's the That's what players. I'm saying. Yes. You, have, you want the place to respect you, but yes. also know that. Like you have to do your, your job. That's yeah. Your coach. yeah. Look, yeah. he loves so the club. He tells you. Yeah. Even if he's the best friends with Coruscant, if he wants you dropped, you're dropped. Because that's, uh, what's it called? From a business point of view, he has to do that. But from an, like outside football, he's his friend. But when it comes to playing footy, yeah. a completely different story. So that's why they've got to see him that way. The only reason why I think it might work, Benji Marshall, is because he loves the club. So yeah. he'll do everything he can to bring back the glory days of Tigers. Look, we've had Kevin Moore. He loved the club. We had Jim Dimmick at a period where we only played seven games, I'm pretty sure, and we won like five games. Yeah, we and he he's like knows the Bulldogs DNA. Even Mick Potter, how he many paid times did he? He loves the club. He performed well. Unfortunately, he didn't get the, the role he was looking for. So but again, yeah. he loves the club, so that's a key factor for him yeah. heading into the season. So, so yeah, Tigers are up. looking good. Um, but now we move on to Andrew Abdu. Um, he's made a few comments about introducing a forward pass a technology, which of course, I think we all agree that it should be implemented. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, uh, he, what well, he had to say, uh, we need to respect there is a flow in the game. I don't think we are going to be introducing anything soon. And from hearing that, I think that's the dumbest thing I've heard because forward pass, the, the mistakes we've seen, not just last season, but for- The last few years. Before. It's been the last few years, Four I would say. Four costing the game. Yeah. Remember the Avrilla one against the Roosters? Yeah. The Turbo one in 2020 against the Eels? These forward pass could be a big factor to why team loses their top eight chance. <coughs> why team loses the grand final. The Reese Walsh, for example, against the Warriors. Um, the Warriors were, it was 18-6. The Warriors were still in the game and they were starting to build momentum. Not saying they would have won, but that moment was a big- like fact that, and that, that was like that literally a meter and a half forward. Yeah, I'm still Samuel, I'm it. gonna differ. <laughs> but you're that same bloke that was saying, um, get the refs into the game, get the technology out. I remember if you, uh, I, rem I think you were saying that, Shabu. I don't know. I think it was uh, one, me of, one of you boys. It was know. one of us. Yeah. I've been saying that too. Like, get yeah. the refs, get the refs more involved in the game. But now that you want technology in the game, like, doesn't it just ruin the game? But that, that's already, gonna affect everything. That's in the game. Game. He's gonna right, everything. Andrew Abdu. Like, yeah. in a way, yes, Reese Walsh, that was blown out of proportion. That should have been four no, past seven bad, days a week. One. But, but, yeah. but in a way, <laughs> it's like, What's the point of a referee? There's linesmen for a reason. That's their job. Why do we need forward pass technology? You can see that forward pass. You can see when a forward but pass. But when is I see it, I, I think I remember what I said. I was saying, what, I remember it was a few po like the pods ago. Um, I said, why would like you have all the systems to overrule anything, but the forward pass is the only thing. You've got all those systems, yeah. so just put it onto the forward pass. But, but we're always saying about the game slowing down. It's changed and whatever. That's this what is this is this is going to become NFL. If they bring forward passes into the league, every three seconds that forward pass technology, no, sorry, yeah, is going to pick up. Gonna change, sorry, yeah. is going to pick up something, yeah. uh, something even if it's off by a millimeter. They're going to say it's forward pass, stop yeah, the game I for know. about five minutes. No, well, that's that, why that, yeah. this game it's only going to get worse with te uh, uh, in technology. In some ways, yes. Yeah. But in other ways, okay, if yeah. you want to get referees involved in the game, you, you got to need. No, you you, 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 you got to be committed have, to the. They got to have a role inside. Yeah, league and that's referees. their role You're to do. It's gonna yeah. I don't think it will affect the flow of the game. The reason why is that you have got the bunker system. Let if there is a forward pass and there's a try yeah, scored the from system. that, that's there's a bunker say. system for that. Yeah. So that does not affect the flow of the yeah, game don't worry because about the technology. Stuff the technology if that. If every second there's like a forward pass, I understand that maybe that's too much. Yeah. But yeah. there's a bunker system for a reason to cancel that try because that, it's a forward gonna pass. That's going to stop the game. They're going to have to go to the but bunker. But that's different. That's like yeah. every other try no, where no, there's no. a knock on but or something. Forward, no, no. If there's a forward pass in normal play, that's yeah. fine. But if there's a forward pass that leads to a, a try, try, that's when the bunker, of course, can overrule so it. So you're saying if it picks up a forward pass in a Dur play, during a if, try. And it leads to a try. Yeah, but, but if, if it's the other way if around, it's in a normal they'll just ignore it. Yeah, ignore it. It's not. It's hasn't led to something big. Yeah. Because you're not gonna stop it. But that just defeats the purpose. No, but you're not gonna stop you're not gonna stop But it's uh, still uh, in a way it doesn't matter if it's a try or not. Yeah but you're not gonna that, that team got the advantage. Yeah, yeah, I, that I know, from a forward I know, pass. I know what you mean, but I just feel if for the sake of the game, you know, for not affecting affecting the flow, they should make okay, that now right now there's no forward pass technology at all. Yeah. If you wanna bring it to at least bring some sort of like accuracy into into the game, at least put it into the bunker system. So when there's a try and there's been a forward pass, forward pass during that moment, then they can over. They can over, yeah, over yeah. They don't want to. You know how you're saying. Okay, okay. okay. Then, the then what does then, the then what does the linesman do? If, if on the side, like the, the people with the flags, what do they do? They What's can their job? It during, uh, yeah, but I'm saying I, I know what you, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I get yeah, what yeah. you're saying. But their their job, they got one job on that field to run up and down that sideline yeah. looking yeah. for forward passes and whatnot. 
Yeah. That's legit. That, when, yeah, when, yeah, it is. No, you're right. Yeah. You, you only had one job. Yeah, your, you're right. your one job you're is right. to ruin four passes. But the problem is I've been noticing lately the last two, three seasons like about the forward passes. Yeah, yeah. They're just slacking off. They're just not caring about the forward yeah, passes. Yeah. They're just worried about letting but, them get in the tries. Yeah, but I, yeah, but in a way, I feel, in, like yeah. in my opinion, I'm going to say it again, it just, it's going to make the game worse. Yeah, it, that, that's it what's going to happen. Better, yeah, better, but well, worse. It is going to happen. Better in a way we can detect it, but in a way we want to fight. Why do you think they brought the six again rule? To keep keep the pace going, everyone. yeah. Everyone, uh, everyone. Right. That, that. But again, I feel if they're using the bunker system, that's already that's been there for years. Yeah. So yeah. I think if they just add the ability to check forward passes, I don't think it'll make. The but how much? How many times do you do you do shit what? on the bunker system? Yeah, I do yeah. because they take so long. Exactly. Yeah. Forward passes are gonna yeah. take. It's, it's, not a, only, it's, it's not gonna only, add to an element not only of do the they game. Take time. Yeah. The calls are stupid. Yeah, like they, they don't make the right calls. Exactly. So I think. Look, all right, for instance, but I for think instance, forward, all right, for forward instance. passes, yeah. Yeah. it's easy to depict if it's okay. a forward pass. Yeah, okay. Then, like, say a ball grounding on the corner of a try, that's different. I understand, or obstruction, whatever. But for forward pass, it's so easy to depict that if you make a bad call, everyone's going to say, What the hell are you doing? Yeah, yeah, so you, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's the no. problem. Uh, that's how I see it. I, I, I see it. When they, see, when they see the forward pass, that's it. You got to move I on. I don't think it will affect Next the game. Set. Like, they, you have to I'm, make the right calls. I'm, if you don't make the yeah. right calls, they, they screw themselves So, over. you think, would it affect the game, you reckon? I think it will. I don't think it would. I, don't I think, think it will it affect. affect the pace of the game. It won't affect. I don't think it will affect the pace. It's an effect with an A. You know the A back yeah. in school A yeah. effect. Yeah. I, don't like I don't think it will affect the pace. No, not negative, but in both ways. But mainly, mainly the pace of the game. Uh, fair I, I think yeah, it will okay. affect. Whether yeah, you, both whether both you do. Good points. Yeah. Let's now uh, move on yeah. to uh, Danny Baduras, a uh, Knights uh, player, former Knights player, has stated that. Uh, the Knights' current team is not happy with a top eight finish. They are aiming for top four in 2024. Wow, that's I think it's possible. What they showed last year—they're getting year, too cocky. Do you, <laughs> you, yeah, think I think so? you can't. Can you can't? Can you need to aim big. You cannot be unhappy with a top eight finish. Yeah, you got to be happy with the. But top you got to give finish. credit to the Knights team. They want bigger. They, they want saw. Big. It's always good to want to achieve bigger. They, they saw. They saw a bit of the glimpse, like from last year. Now, if they're saying this year they want to make top four. It's going to be very hard because it's a different level because there's, exactly. there's a lot of now good teams. The, like the teams are actually picking up right now mm. and not just like uh, Penrith Panthers, I'm talking about Brisbane Broncos, South Sydney yeah. Roosters. There's a lot of teams are going to step up more than Knights. Especially well, after, but if after Knights, four seasons. Eh? Especially like Rabbitohs, they had a bad yeah, season. Yeah, they had a bad oh, season, but they will step up. Yeah. But what? my point is, if Newcastle yeah. needs to step yeah. up, they got to start playing very good from and the it's, start. And it's, and it's good that they're having that mentality that yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not exactly. satisfied with the eight. Yeah. We're satisfied with the four. It's great We, to we didn't do that last year in the it, season. Is yeah. it false confidence? Uh, is nobody it false knows. Nobody knows. We're, like, technically, we should, but like, we're doing right, We're okay. saying we're going like, to yeah, win the comp. So. Yeah, okay. But like, but the, I, th I truly think in a way, maybe this might be false confidence. They're trying to they're trying to hype themselves. They've lost Dominic Young. Like, in which world are yeah, they going to make the eight? Yeah, that's a big miss. Yeah, that's a massive loss. I don't know. For me- you head into a season, I think what they've got an advantage out of any other team in the comp next year is that oh, they're going to learn from last year how mm. they started the season so bad, but they ended up so strong. So I think that's a motivation for them that if they're starting bad, they're not going to give up. They're going to use that motivation from last year yeah. to keep on pushing and maybe they'll have another 10 winning streak. Yeah, so I think that's an advantage to have over the I, other clubs look, heading I into next year. I saying false hope because I feel they didn't, they didn't click until round 16. So That's I right, yeah, I remember. Still, they finished fifth. It was I know, lucky. I know, but I just feel <coughs> it just happened like that. It was luck. Is it really luck? luck? It's luck. It's no, all about luck. Who they beat? Right. There's they beat. I remember there's many clubs that have went through this where they don't start the season well. They finish off so great, but then they the next. But season, don't you need luck? Reality. But luck no, is in sport. You need luck. Was, uh, if that was that Bulldogs, was, yeah. if that was Bulldogs, hundred percent, I'll be happy. But it's about the next season. Can they do it again? Personally, for me, I, I think there could be a little bit of false hope there. Because they've lost Tyson Gamble, actually. Yeah, which is no, he's in the squad, but I don't think he's been selected. And is Ponga going to stay fit? So I understand your point. It could be just that period where they were just on form and I, no one could yeah. stop them. I just think if you, you're you bad to 16, you're battling for the spoon, and then suddenly you click, you, there's got to be some sort of consistency throughout the season to know, okay, these guys are going to do good next season. That's what I feel, again, that there's some sort of false hope. Maybe I'm wrong. They, maybe they I'm wrong. Be, Melbourne, they beat Penrith, they beat Cowboys, they, they beat they're us, beating obviously. every big team. They In my opinion, us. it's a sit one season wonder. Yeah, I think. Yeah, like, We've got a prediction video coming off yeah, since, so do you yeah. think they'll make top eight? So you don't that, think that, that's I, a, I, No, that's I a very tricky thing. I, so yeah. I, I'm waiting for that for when we get to that point, like the, the next month for the NRL prediction. 
Yeah, I am, but it's just that it's going to be very different this year. I think tough. it's going to be a tough season. Look, I don't think top four they'll get. I think yeah. there's so many. The, yeah. whole, the, the weight of the world's on their shoulders. I think yeah. top eight they'll get. The weight of the world's on their shoulders, meaning that, again, once like no one expected them to be in the eight last year. Yeah. Now, how do we do it again? So how, like are we to, on them. how are we going to pull this off with less players with and not more, the same squad we pressure, had in 23? Yeah. The weight of the world's on the we'll north shoulder. We'll, 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 we'll have to find out. We'll have to find out. We'll guess, we'll, we'll guess what's going to happen. Um, we move on now. Pango Jr. He's going to return to the NRL. Yeah. Uh, I've seen that Broncos training. Yeah, yeah I actually yeah, saw that the last few days. That looks a joke, man. I think that- He came out and said- nothing to it. Jesse's he's probably visiting- You sure? His family. You never know. He came sure? out. He said it's just family visits. You sure, but I think he was taking out, taking his family to see the bron- meet the Broncos. Players. Maybe the way he w- the the only way he could have gone out is just to pretend that he wanted to do boxing, come back soon. Maybe you never did he did he go in Broncos. did he go in Kevin Walter's office and strike a deal? Or, Look, you know? if you're especially at what's it called, Broncos, Broncos, you're yeah. gonna have a chance of beating the coach and potentially signing in like a deal maybe next year or the year after. You don't. All right, if his if his mind's fully set on boxing, fair enough. We, we, like it seems, seems to be that he's yeah, more set on boxing. Absolutely. But you don't go to any training session, talk to the players, talk to the coaching staff, and not have that conversation. Because yeah. it sounds even, like even well, sorry, yeah. even in a joking way, aha, uh-huh, like yeah, yeah, come yeah, join yeah, the boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. exactly. It but puts it, that idea in his head. You don't know. Uh, you it don't it know. sounds you like know. very very sus. Like imagine to me, Pango like. was to have three fights in his entire boxing career. And just to come back in NRL. Look, that's just yeah. like it, it just makes no sense that's because an like, it, it sounds very, very sus. Yeah, like yeah. you're saying like for a minute you got like you're becoming a boxer and you're doing fights. And then you go but then the on the other hand, you're, you're going to Broncos. Brisbane Broncos training. Like that is just it doesn't a bit make confu- sense. It doesn't make no sense at yeah, all. Yeah, it like, could be nothing. It, it could be nothing. It could be nothing, nothing, could be nothing or he probably like how you said he could struck a deal with yeah. Kevin Walters. Nobody knows no one knows what the truth and the lies. Yeah. Look so Everyone's gonna see it differently. Yeah. But in that moment, everyone's gonna be questioning, oh my gosh, he's gonna join the Broncos. That's what everyone was thinking. Yeah, that, that's what I reckon happen, every NRL fan's probably predicting happen, right now. I wouldn't care if he yeah. joined because yeah. he was a waste of money. Well, I, I don't care. But I know Gus Gordon that would <laughs> yeah. have a problem with that. Yeah. They'd have a big No, I think the that. league will have a problem with that. Like, I think like, so, yeah. They, no, because like, yeah, all right. Would that open to a door that, okay, if I wanna get out of my club, this is what I gotta do. It could you be that one. Yeah. You remember the Cherry Evans backflip on the contract? Yeah. yeah. Slowly, after he did it, some uh, another player wanted to do yeah, it. Yeah, I But then they stopped that. it completely. Yeah. Imagine that's yeah, the yeah. case. You know, yeah, that's, a, that's a good point, Sam. <laughs> yeah, point. yeah that's what I'm saying. So it could open a door to, okay, <laughs> like for example, Luke Brooks, for example, he wanted to leave Tigers. He, all he could have yeah. done is just start, done mm. that. So that's true. Look, it could open a, like, We'll start a, a trend. We'll that. start a, start a know, trend. Start a trend. <laughs> right, uh, anyway, speaking we'll about the Broncos. this time. Speaking about the Broncos, the Broncos have confirmed a promotional partnership with NFL star Tom Brady. Oh, wow. Um, in a quote from Kevin Walters, the Broncos coach, Tom Brady and the Broncos, it doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get much better than that. And we're welcoming him to our city. So he's talking about Tom Brady. Um, like he's actually the guy so of NFL. I think it's a, it's a, it's good. a, it's yeah. a market employee to yeah. promote the NRL Vegas yeah. thing. Um, we've talked about Tom Brady yeah, yeah. having yeah. something. He's one of the, the best. He was one of the best thought, NFL players, man. I thought I thought he'd do something with the NRL. I was yeah. still doing something with the NRL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know like a specific club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, the Broncos are going to. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So he's going to do. So you know, you never know. Maybe like Broncos got Tom Brady. Maybe um, who was his maybe name? Another, Manny's maybe another. Manny's got Hugh Jackman. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Maybe each each team has their own celebrity. That'd, that'd be mad. That'd, that'd be yeah, mad. That'll be, that'll be something different. It's gonna yeah. be mad that um, Las Vegas or the whole thing. The Just way the whole event. They've the already started their time. marketing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Campbell Graham's there. Aaron Woods is there. Yeah. John Bernard was even there. So yeah. see, see what John Bernard said about um, Aaron, to Aaron Woods. Aaron, yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like, aren't you retired, mate? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Truly, but the, yeah, bloke, yeah, so, the um, blokes are walking fossil. Yeah, exactly. Uh, bro, we forgot about Aaron Woods. Since he left the dogs, completely forgot. Oh, no, he just changed no, but you know why? You know why he's there. He's here to promote. The, he's, a, he's a good speaker. He's, yeah, he is. Yeah. He's very good. Because he does speaker. work for a radio show. I think Triple M. Uh, yeah, yeah, he actually does. And he has his own podcast as well. He's been on Fox League a bit. Yeah. So yeah, he's a good... Like again, he knows. Yeah. How to so, Tom, do you think? Do you think the market? See, see how like, um, before like the big events, like whatever event it is, always got marketing campaigns and whatnot to promote whatever they're yeah, trying yeah. to promote. Yeah, yeah. Like this, really, this NRL Vegas really comes down to that. How well do they market this NRL Vegas event? Yeah. Like, do you think it will work? Do you think they'll they'll take the right steps to promote the game in the right way? Like, have you seen the promotional video? That's that they've already released. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. They're trying to promote the big hits. All the Americans, yeah, if you've yeah, seen my yeah. TikTok sketch, yeah, it's yeah. always about the big hits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, 
They're not really big hits. If you want to show big hits, why don't you, you pull gotta, up? You gotta pull show up, the old day ones. Go into the archives the and pull days. up all the old footage, like, like the retros, like, like in the eighties, the seventies, the nineties. They've already messed up in yeah. a way. Like, do you think the fights? Do you think they can pull it off? I they got they got to think smart. They've already got a few mm. top celebrities and sport, famous sport um, players like yeah. Tom Brady, like we've mentioned. They've got Hugh Jackman, so they're enough like celebrities to already but promote like, the the business. Yeah, the game. celebrity endorsement. Yeah, yes. but it's another way of like how do you promote the game to normal civilians? Like that's one way. That celebrity endorsement. How you how are you gonna market to the American market? That should it's be a hard market. Like the, the back in the days, the origin of footy. You know, like playing in the mud. Yeah. And how that all grew up, the fights with Mark Guy, Wally Lewis. Yeah. Just and the greatest moments. I remember those, in the game. those yeah. iconic moments, the Thurston moment, the last minute. Yeah. Hodkinson. And like a full documentary, like you know how when they have, um, you remember that James Graham one and the ref and- Yeah, that was back in 20, 2014. 2014, yeah, I was at that, that game. Was I was like, really, truly showed yeah. the toughness yeah, of yeah, the They should make it a, like an hour documentary for American fans to watch how they, what the so game they can is understand around. what is rugby league yeah. and and what the rules are and all that stuff. I feel like they really need they to do, do something better. with yeah. the NFL. Really, really, that's their market. They the can NFL do market. like a big like investing and business and collab as well, but yeah. it's gonna take a bit of time. And we've said that discussion like heaps of times. Like but I'm just past. saying about the marketing campaign. Yeah, it's, you think about all the like. Go look at the way Mac is marked. Uh, for instance, it's not like a, it's different. In a way, yeah. it's the same. The way Mac is marked, just they still promote on TV to this day. As yeah. you know, marketing campaigns, it's it's a make or break for your event. Yeah, I don't know if the NRL can do it. So I don't know if the NRL can pull that off. We'll see. I think we we'll have to find they, out. Uh, we'll see in the next month because really that's when the hype starts. Yeah, but we'll see how it turns out. Exactly. I don't know. Uh, anyways, we've got this segment coming up uh, called Guess the Moment. Uh, okay. I'm gonna bring it up here, but. How are we gonna do it? Because you're we'll gonna all say, okay. See it. But you're all gonna say the answer at once. Yeah. Right, what okay. is that? Yeah. Explain it. Explain it. So guess the moment. So what I've got, I've got a few of the greatest moments in uh, the game in previous years. Yep. And what I've done, I've got the photo, but the picture is actually blurred out. Okay. So oh, it's gonna okay. be a Makes bit hard. Okay, so we're gonna guess the oh, guess, guess the, the moment. The yeah. guess the moment okay. with the Who's pictures being blurred. Just us three. Us three. Us three. three, yeah. us three? I thought it was okay. two. Yeah, let's do us three then. So this moment. Oh, I know that one. Okay. All right. I know. All so right. how we do it? Are we, how do we doing that? Shabu? The buzzer? We'll do a buzzer. All right. Okay. Now, everyone okay, says their one. Okay, everyone say says their one. I'll say, okay, who do you, no, no. Who oh. do you think it is? So that was, um, that was Jared Hayne, uh, State of Origin yeah, 2014. All right. 2014. Yeah, you all said that? Yeah. Okay. So, Anthony so gets one. did I get that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah everyone. You definitely got that right. Okay, next one. Oh, all right. Okay. Jonathan Thurston, 2015. Got it right. Wow. What a game. What a game. That was the like moment of the year. Uh, Paul Gallon fight. Next That's right. You <laughs> got it. See it? Yes. Ooh, oh, this oh, is uh, what's that? Scott Sattler. Nah, you didn't uh, say it. Scott, the tackle, Scott. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it is. Back in 2003, yeah, I remember right. that. And this one, we've got one more. Oh, what Friday is that? Clash. Good Friday class. Oh, oh like David Clever, James Gray. I didn't even clock that. Okay, that's that, that's that referee. So who yeah. won? So who won? It's yeah, Samuel. 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 Something right. small, small segment. Yeah, we'll we'll be putting that up on the Instagram story. story. Make sure you go follow it, follow it, and yeah, have a go. Get how much you want. And tell us, tell us what you get. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap up for league talk. Now we're moving on to some wrestle talk. It's been a while, of course, with no podcast. We're finally bringing it back. And first of all, we're going to be speaking about Matt Riddle, who's no longer a WWE superstar, but he was uh, last last year until he got released. Yeah, yeah and now um, he's uh, so returned. Gonna, he's yeah, returned now. So he, he signed with, uh, no, like oh, he, yeah, he signed with a different yeah. company. Well, who's he signed with? He, uh, he signed with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay, New Japan. Yeah, and- oh, yeah. Uh, Surprised he didn't sign with AEW. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm very surprised. We always take WWE regions. I know. Yeah, surprisingly, <laughs> um, but- It's crazy, actually. We want to talk about- <coughs> We're going to take it back two years from today. 2022, Money yeah. Money in the bank. Um, he was saying, he was in an interview saying that he was supposed to win the 2022 Money in the Bank. So here's what he said. Want to hear something else cool? I was supposed to win Money in the Bank, but Vince McMahon really likes Austin Theory. And literally hours before, they changed it and Austin was added in and threw me off the ladder. After I took two huge ladder bumps off the RKO and everything else is, and everything else and it's like, but I love Austin Theory and I'm happy for him. Keep, keep kidding it, bro. So basically, Austin Theory took his moment, his moment of glory for the money in the bank, and yeah, then Austin Theory that money in the bank didn't go. You can didn't go well. You can tell that last line was so dirty. Yeah, (laughs) but I love Austin Theory and I'm happy for him. Keep kidding, kidding. just that last line. Keep kidding her, bro. (laughs) He's not kidding her. He's 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 buried. With that look, (laughs) Matt Riddle, I remember that. 
I remember that moment, the, the match when it all happened. I was like, it's either gonna be Matt Riddle because he was in, he was doing good in that period yeah. in WWE awesome. or Austin Theory because I knew Miss Vince McMahon loved him. At that moment, Austin Theory was turning out to be like the next big thing. Like they were pushing him. Vince McMahon wanted him to be the best, like the next John Cena. But suddenly, that's not happening anymore. But with Matt Riddle, do you think if he had won it? Is he a WWE champion like material? Like a, cha a championship material? He never had in the first place. Matt Riddle? He's, he's, never did. he's only won the United States Championship. Even then, he, it's, he yeah. didn't really deserve it. He doesn't, it was, just, yeah, think so. it was just placed onto him by Vince McMahon. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Personally, for me, I think like he does a lot for the business. Yeah. He's always there week in, week out. Does very good matches with any superstar he's in the ring with. Yeah. But for me, winning the money bank is something that you need to be fit to wear like the championship. And I just don't feel he's the right person to- It's not just fit, it's the pressure because when you win that case, it's you have it like advantage like mm. to win at any time. But, yeah, yeah. but you just have to get it at the right moment. Mm. Depends what uh, main event like you're going to, like yeah, yeah, exactly. backlash or- It can even be on normal It doesn't matter show. what it is, yeah. But you just got to be very smart when you use before it. you make the move, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think he was like a championship material I, for me. I, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I feel with Matt Riddle like, <coughs> It, now, if he was in WWE, I think I can see him maybe with the World Heavyweight Championship, but the mm, WWE- maybe, No, yeah, not the, just the, there. The Austin Theory. The no, uh, uh, Riddle. Matt, Matt Riddle. I feel I can see him in that, but not what yeah. Roman's holding. But he had a bit of- Not even. Yeah, yeah but he had a bit of- I, 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 see him, I see him I see holding that belt one day, like if it was One day, yeah, but he had a bit of controversial, like with his personal family issues as well. And he had a bit of divorce as well. Yeah, he had a lot of problems. Yeah, he had a lot of problems. That's why they had to release him. I want to mention about Austin Theory now, since he's the topic. Uh, what a decline is that? Now yeah. he's doing it like a tag team with, with, uh, Grayson Waller. with Grayson Waller. The Aussie Aussie guys, yeah. It's not, it's, yeah, I mean, look, Vince Mc, you can tell Vince McMahon's out of the company. He's yeah. Left, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. They're not trying Triple to promote this guy no more. Him. Yeah, it's uh, no, no one. No one saw anything in him. Even you had John Cena on the mic burying him. Just yeah. in a promo. The rock, it, yeah, the rock, yeah. The fans didn't like him. They didn't like yeah. the project Mr. McMahon wanted. Yeah. So look, yeah, I never yeah. really rated that. Yeah, and move. I feel the theory I would, didn't work. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he's the next one to get released soon. Nah, I don't, or, no, I don't maybe, say. Or, we won't be happy with. He probably is like to where he was to where he yeah. is now. He's probably. Nah, you off. know what? They'll change it around. I reckon Triple H will put him as a, like a baby face. That's what everyone's waiting for. He but maybe needs he, a change. No matter baby face, he'll turn. Yes. The bloke is cringy. You can't, yeah, you can't he, deny. I can't listen and to I that guy speak. I think he loves himself too much. I can't listen yeah. to that guy speak. I know. Wrestler is decent wrestler. He's a good wrestler. I just can't, I can't hear his promos. They're, they're yeah. very cringy to me. It's just, you can tell he's putting on he's a He's not the perfect yeah. uh, wrestling uh, character natural. fit. Yeah. To think that guy was going to be the face. Thank yeah. God Vince McMahon. I, I think he's up himself so to be honest. AEW like, maybe one day. That's his character. He's up himself, but you can be up yourself, but be like MJF. That's right. Yeah, he's up right. himself, but how authentic he's does good, he come yeah. across? And this bike is actually heading on. He doesn't kill. He doesn't. He doesn't kill kayfabe. I know. Even out, have you seen the video of? Uh, sorry, off topic. Yeah. MJF. I love it. MJF fan outside the arena. He. I think. The girl oh, wanted to take the, a yeah, photo. I saw that on YouTube. The girl, actually, the girl wanted to take a photo with. Yeah. Uh, he stuck with the middle finger right on yeah, the knee. Yeah. The, the girl was like eight. <laughs> Do you know MJF? Yeah, I know MJF. Uh, AEW champion. I know, I know oh, MJF, yeah. yeah. Maxwell, he, Maxwell he Freeman. He flipped uh, the girl, <laughs> eight-year-old girl that wanted to take a- character. That's his yeah. character. Yeah, he has to stay in That's kayfabe. But, but yeah, you, know, you know they said the rumors about MJF, he's yeah, actually heading on his way to WWE. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually he's excited about this he, He's got a new story. Apparently there's like rumors he might sign a new deal at AEW and he's also nah, got think so. a new storyline there. So maybe not now, but I think maybe soon in the future He's actually gone. He's lost, like he's actually gone because he lost the title against the old Joe. No, but there's a new storyline. That's what I'm hearing. Do you think so? He's yeah, built a he's built a new storyline. Story I'm sorry, be, I don't think false. I don't think MJF will work at WWE. No, I think it will fit. He won't work. You know right. why? His character is known to be that edgy type of character. AEW is that edgy type he of company. No, no, not not cause a problem. As in, um, like he can't. A, yeah. His promos won't hit the same because of the WWE product. Yeah. WWE doesn't allow you to say certain things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he gets away with certain things at AEW because yeah. it's AEW. Yeah. You know what I mean? But some of them take personal things. The, too. the transition can, to, to go, all right, he will earn the bag at WWE yeah, yeah. since his stock has risen. He's the main guy. But why would you go to a company that's only going to um, devalue your, your already established you character? Be the highest, like best exactly. Year. You might, yeah. you might get, you might be the, a mid Carter. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah, you might but be like a Matt Riddle. Because a lot of people they want him to go. I want to. I want to see him in WWE. It'll be good addition. I, I want to see him like, too. I want, well. I want him to win the championship, like for one but day. I don't, I don't think. Know I when. think his place is at yeah. AEW. He's, maybe if he cut, if he cuts his promos in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, look, he's he's the best right now in AEW, and as you said, like, why would he want to give all that up? Yeah. 
potentially risking where when he goes back to WWE, if he goes to WWE in Monaco, or like all right. He's a champion, man. He's He's AEW champion. champion. Talking about champion, Roman Reigns. (laughs) I don't know if you guys watched it two weeks ago on SmackDown. Yeah. Attacked, of course, Randy, AJ Styles, and LNI in during their triple threat match. Uh, and the SmackDown manager, uh, what's his name? Nick, Nick Aldis. Aldis confirms a fatal four way at Royal Rumble. Yeah. What are your thoughts that's on the championship? A, that's going to be a big, we, we big all know. We all know he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, like, he's going to win. I know that, but it's going to be a big, big fight. So I'm looking it's forward to it. Because you know who's winning. I hate that. I was about to say it. I, yeah, I, I was about to it's say it, man. It's Yeah, yeah. It's, it's annoying, man. Like no, it, probably another interference. It's like, oh, no, yeah, I heard they said I there could be they another interference. No, no. Literally no point of that I match. I think what's going to happen, I think Solo yeah. and Jim won't be allowed to enter that match. I hope so. Because it won't, it's why again- Why didn't the WWE, like, like Triple H, why didn't, he, why didn't he create a story for Rumble? It's like, yeah. All right, I think Roman Reigns might lose that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that, that's what we want to see. Every but fan under the sun is saying he's going to win. Yeah, the exactly. only, he's the, the favorite. I think course. we can all agree the only moment I thought he'd lose it was WrestleMania last yeah. year. Yeah. That was a crazy that's when the Cody only Rhodes like, had him. Like, yeah, had him. I was watching it full glimpse and I'm like, Cody win. Rhodes had the whole uh, the whole che- like match, match. Like He was winning it for sure. Yeah. But when Solo came out of nowhere and interfered, I'm like, here we go again. Exactly. Even even Here the rock, go. even the rock at Mania, we all know he he's losing. Win. Yeah, because yeah. rock's not going to. But stay. there's still that bit inside of me, and a lot of fans that are saying the rock could win. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah, like I so don't. So is the match like it's basically a dead robber? Why if they re- is. if they re- yeah sorry. rock's coming back? Yeah. He he's like already confirmed he wants to versus Roman. Cody Rhodes wants us. So why would Randy Lnr Ada Souls win that belt? It doesn't make exactly. sense. So why didn't they get the rock to come back at? After Rumble, or maybe no, nah, Survivor elim- Series, Elimination Chamber. Since, since the next event is Rum- uh, is well, Mania, well, yeah, but since okay, you, but I'm saying, what, why? Look, uh, this is how they should have done it. What is that? They should have did the Fatal Four Way. Okay, all right, all said and done. Uh, in a way, yeah, all right. We, he, we, we, all, we, all know, the, yeah. we all know Roman Reigns is winning. Yeah, yeah. At the Chamber, you get <coughs> the Rock to um, do a shock return in front of all the Australian fans, and then announce head of the table. And then that that will spiral into Mania. Yeah. The, the whole yeah. story. Yeah, that, into that's Mania. what I think I, it should I happen. Yeah, we see the Rock again until elimination. That's what I. Yeah, think. fair enough. But because yeah. we look, we're overlooking two storylines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're it's looking over two storylines. Yeah, yeah, we got we got the fatal four away, but also we know that Rock's in the picture. And now, Cody so. Rhodes is also in the Cody picture. Cody Rhodes is in so the picture. Don't forget about him. I, I I don't know where it's gonna go. I don't know when when he's gonna lose it. It's not going to be Royal Rumble. It's not going to be Elimination Chamber if he's facing someone. Or anything. They're saying that he might um, stay as champion for another year to 2025. Yeah, yeah, I've heard if that. If it's Rock at WrestleMania, yeah. he's not losing that. He yeah. wants. Apparently, they want him to pass the Hulk Hogan record. I think they'll make that happen. Roughly so. Look, yeah, I, yeah. I said it on the previous part. He could yeah. lose at SummerSlam, maybe. Well, I, I that said could be Cody Rhodes right there. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just trying to think. Do I want to? Do I want him to surpass Hulk Hogan? No, I don't think so. I don't know because I, I want to see a lot of Rock winning it one more time. They have to. He's gotten they're that gonna, far, they're gonna make they're gonna him break it. My only issue, we've mentioned this before, yeah. but Roman Reigns. Yeah, we've said it. Like, Yeah, but we've said it. We, we copped a lot of sh- uh, rubbish in the comments yeah. about his condition and why he can't make, why like, he's not a full timer. Yeah, yeah. But don't put the bloody belt on him. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes no time, sense. Like, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know where he I stand on this. wasn't on this week again. Yeah, yeah. come exactly. on. Yeah. Like, like, Doesn't make sense we to me. Know it's the, we know they're the ones that do the storyline. Yeah. But again, we're supposed to talk as if he's the one. Yeah. That's what people, the comments, a lot of the comments are like, we understand WWE do the storyline. And that's yeah. his character, but like he can't character. fight every we week. Gotta, we got to talk as if it's Roman that's doing it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what I'm, fe- that's what I just, like, yeah. why is he not, why is he I not, know Dave, Dave, why is he not Dave, showing Dave, up? That's at the, least, man. They've yes. created him as a wrestler that just fights on pay-per-view matches. Yeah. Exactly. But again, there's sometimes you should, like I'm, I think the last time we fought on an actual show, well, he didn't fight, but he was getting ready was, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. And that was the last time he didn't yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want him to fight. It but doesn't make look, sense look at Randy Orton after that injury that he had. He returned and he's look at it. And he's week. fighting every week. Yeah, but, but he's not a champion. Except the no, Orton, he's not a champion, still, but he uh, is a look, tough look son look of a bitch. Like, that's respect what I'm Seth Rollins. Every week he's-, he's There you go. He's a tough- his belt at there you go. Four, depending about main events, he's always on the show. Everyone loves him. But Roman Reigns- Because he's different to Reigns. He's different to Reigns. We keep saying that like just- at least show up. Yeah. Do a promo That's something. A, and look at the, uh, uh, John Moxley as well. He, he's going to become a champion as well in the ba- different and promotion. And he always defends it too. You did a TikTok vid of the yeah. Roman Reigns and if over, and you mentioned how many title defenses did he have? What is it? Roman Reigns. On TikTok, you did 
Was it? Oh, I mentioned that. Oh, I said did? Roman Reigns had like like 16. 16 defences while CM Punk, when he had it, yeah. had like yeah. 100. Yeah, I thought it was you, but yeah, see. But it's more memorable, man. Like him staying at home is not making- It's not doing anything. It's not, it's not yeah. creating moments. Yeah. No. At least CM Punk, when you think back, he had he had great moments like 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 the uh, when he lost the title to Rock. All right, fair yeah. enough. But he had, he had many great moments in his uh, title reign. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. like, like when he defended Rollins, it every like Rollins every single week. The one at Crown Jewel against Drew McIntyre. What a match that yeah. was! Yeah, that, that was, was that was Drew massive. McEntire, firstly, I think Drew McIntyre should have won it. Yeah. yeah, that's when Solo Look, interviewed. Yeah, exactly. I know we're all looking forward to this Royal Rumble match between for the championship belt, but the most and the one we're looking forward to is Royal Rumble. Yeah. Who do you yeah. think will win it? Ah, uh, that, that's a tough, uh, tough one, but. I See, but for me, it's Seam Punk or Cody Rhodes. I, I, I was telling you my cousin won't the other be, day. Be Cody I think it's Seam Punk, Cody Rhodes last two, and then Seam Punk. So it's not going to be that predictable. And Seam Punk beats Seth. It's not going to be that predictable. Triple H is not that dumb. No, no, because if he was that yeah. dumb, he would have. Look at Roman. Would, hey? Fatal four way. Look how predictable. That yeah, is. I, I know, but that's yeah. that's because they not. have to create a match. Yeah, exactly. This is like a moment where. Rest, Raw Rumble's so prestigious. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Look last like the two years Raw Rumbles, has been, been horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so actually been nothing. So yeah, exactly. We might be able, we, like we can be worried that it's going to be the same, or Triple H got something up his sleeve. But is this the first Raw Rumble where Triple H is fully in charge? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think maybe, so. Yeah. Could be good then. So we but my, my point is, um, if CM Punk lose, either way, he's going to go to Mania to verse Rollins, yeah. Rollins for the World yeah, Heavyweight yeah. Title. But for the Rumble, I don't know who's going to win it. Yeah. I, I have no idea. That's a good point you made because. He's versing Seth either way, so maybe he doesn't yeah. need the, the Royal Rumble to win it. But then you know? we're forgetting about Damien Priest. He's got the money in the bank. That, that, I've he mentioned that a few so times. Can, Damien Priest Saint still Punk has can that. win yeah. versus Seth. Sam Punk wins. Damien like cashes in. That like so I think they're gonna he, do something with this Rumble. Yeah, they have to. Or even just he could cash it in. He could cash yeah. it in for the, you know the championship. Not, like I'm not saying, good to oh, see yeah. him cash it in during a Royal Rumble match. Can that is that nah. possible? He can if there's a champion. I feel like something un. Something that unpredictable would, is going to be. That's what I'm saying. Ima that's imagine, unpredictable. imagine, for example, you're probably going to laugh at this, but imagine because you got the fatal four way. Careful what you say. Yeah, mate. I know, I know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, imagine <laughs> Damien Priest just cashes it on Reigns. I'm just saying, <laughs> out of my head. Me too. No, I'm just saying, Wait, like it could happen. What, what would he win it? He could win it. Now look, <laughs> <laughs> Damien Priest. No, no, but you should have kept that So you reckon Damien Priest? I want to put a. Do you think? I don't know. We'll find out. Damien Priest. Do you think it's right if they made Damien Priest cash it at WrestleMania against Roman? That's just as dumb as what no, it is. I'm saying WrestleMania. That's even more dumber. Because <laughs> they're saving it for the big match rock. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying. Yeah, but all right. But do what? Do we, oh, okay. Do but do, do you think? Like, personally, I'm not, I'm, I don't think so. But okay. I'm saying, I'm posing you just, you just swear, okay. Do you think it? That's what I'm saying because he's mentioned. But it's just, it's just, a, it's just a dumb question. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I, but I, you know, I was saying. No. But maybe yeah, he, no he might cash it in no against uh, Rollins no no, for the world heavyweight. It's Seth Rollins' belt. No, but he's going to go for it. Damien Priest. You've got about, about, for the you've world got about title. three people that want to finish the two yeah. people that want to finish the story. It's just all CM like, Punk and Cody. Circle, like it's so but confusing. What about if Cody wins it and then yeah. Damien cashes in on him. Yeah, see that can happen. That's not it. Can look who's your winner for Royal Rumble? Yeah, we're going off track. Um. I don't know. That who won it last tough. year? Rhodes? No, Rhodes won it last Rhodes year. Won it. He's not two in a row. He won't win back to back. No, not a chance. He's won back to back already. He won't win three in a row. Could it? Okay. Did he win back to back already? No, he didn't win back to back. No, he didn't. That's his second in a row. No, he returned that mania two years ago. that mania. When he versed Rollins as a- Yeah, sorry. Is it a potential underdog to win it? No one's going to expect it. I'm not saying- You know what? I'm going to go Punk. saying good Punk hasn't won it. Punk hasn't won it. They're going to give it to him. It's it's very tough. No, I'm going to uh, look, I, I love look. I love I love every professional wrestler, but I don't know. I think CM Punk. If he's saying that his word that like he's going to win the Rumble, I'll just say. <laughs> look, yeah. I, I'm going to say. I Punk. think That's look, CM say. Punk. That, That's just my opinion. I'd love to see is out of nowhere. Jay Uso wins it and then he try, gets Roman Reigns yeah. for the belt. <laughs> Bad he's actually got better. Jay but what, do you, what, what would you do with Jay Uso if he wins? First Roman and his fam rock, his family. And Roman. That's what they should have done. That, that's not bad. Actually. That's, that's what they not bad. Versus cousin, cousin, versus cousin. Jay maybe Uso, the, maybe for the maybe Royal Rumble Logan winner. Something. It could be Jay. Maybe that's not a good. That's not a bad. Just start rocking Roman, I'm saying like you said, to win. So I say, do you Punk think? Is, yeah. so, sorry, uh, what is I'm going to change the topic. <laughs> uh, are we done with this topic? Yeah, we are done with this. I'm going to change the topic. <laughs> All right, we all know The Rock versus Roman at Mania. Do you think it's as big as the once in a lifetime match, John Cena and nah, nah. Nah. The Rock? John Cena Rock Nothing beats that. Nothing or, beats or Cena. Or Stone Cold and Steve Austin and The Rock or Hulk Hogan versus 
The Rock at WrestleMania well, 18. It's all The Rock. John, nah, yeah. John Cena nah, nah I'm going to say, like, like, you know what? You're wrong. I'm going to say The Rock and The Hogan. That was the best fucking mania moment yeah. of all time. I've actually, yeah, I know. Yeah. But I've actually watched it in front of my own eyes. I remember the old tapes back in the days. Yeah. Oh, it's watching great. It. Even just watching it back, it was like, what, like, a, what the, a The moment. flashback, Look, that was the best all time uh, Of course, I never moment. watched that match, but I'm going to go Cena because of that rivalry that I had between each other. And yeah. We, I'll oh, I'm going to go with Cena. Yeah, Cena. Yeah, I'm going to uh, go with Cena and, and Rock. That, that was yeah. something special because at the time, Cena was the face of the yeah. company. Yeah, he was. The Rock was coming back in. The biggest, it was, he still had his peak, but in a way, he was in his prime in the Hollywood industry. Yeah. Yeah. Coming face to face, the two biggest icons in the industry. That was great. And the, the WrestleMania, oh. they pulled, both of them are the best. At Even players. just, they ruined it with the WrestleMania 29 match. But, anyways, back, that's back a topic back. for another day. Yeah, yeah. But it um, is what it is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I think. But then again, look, there's something to, there's some substance to that Rock and Roman storyline. Yeah. Over thousand day champion at the same time. Head of the table. Head of the table There's a lot to it. So it's it's up there. It's, you could it, say you could say it's bigger. Could be it you could, could be say bigger. bigger. Yeah. Depend how the the like the promos the and that are that, yeah. for the next foot when he comes back from elimination yeah. chamber with and your, of course the match. With it's your J you're right. With your J one about him potentially triple threat. I don't think so because I remember watching an interview with Ariel Hawani. Is that yeah. that's Ariel Hawani? Yeah. yeah. Jay and Jimmy were together. Say so our dream was to always be in a WrestleMania match. So, so maybe that will be next year. No, or I something. feel this is the right time to do it. Cause think, yeah, it's gonna happen this yeah, year. I maybe. I think it's them two. Um, what's good? But yeah, I think that's a wrap to Wrestle Talk. League talks done. Wrestle Talk, and now some combat talk. It's Welcome back to the first combat talk of 2024. Anthony, it's been a while, man. Let's get yeah, straight into it. A lot, a lot of UFC news. Yeah, there's a that's, lot of that's coming over coming the break. Out. But um, let's start off with the UFC final, Ankalaya versus Walker 2. Let's recap it. Um, so we got the first, the first uh, fight was Andre Olofsky versus uh, Cortez Acosta. Yeah. So um, Andre Olofsky came back after three years absent. Yeah. So he wasn't like fighting as much. Olofsky's a veteran. He, yeah, he's, he's actually he made a veteran. his debut, I think. Two two thousand and one, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, two thousand. He started that um that Japanese uh, uh, MMA, and then yeah. he came all yeah. the way through the UFC ranks. But um, through this fight, um, Cortez, he fought it very good, yeah. man. He had a lot of good punches in him, and he um, controlled the whole fight properly. His strikes was good. Yeah. But um, Andre Olovsky, man, he was a bit lacking off. Um, he wasn't focusing properly. Like after three yeah. years, which I understand that. I know these veterans like they they have their big absence and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. but for himself like coming back, I just didn't see that he wasn't himself in that fight because Cortez had that momentum in him. Yeah. Um, he stabilized the whole fight. He looked well. He is. He was. He is a bit younger. He was younger. Yeah, he is younger. But you know fresh. what? Um, it was a it was a slow start to that fight. It uh, was actually. Olofsky was using his distance. Uh, he was using a great use of distance in the, in the octagon. Yeah. But um, yeah, you're right, man. I uh, just but something about this fight that I didn't like. See what um, Acosta was doing in the octagon. Yeah, when he was talking trash. Talk. Talking trash. Yeah. You don't do that to a veteran. <laughs> I, I know. I you know. Don't, no, it's like he's a veteran in the game. You should give him a bit of respect. Yeah. Like, like at the end of the day, olosky has been, been through it all. He's been a, inside the octagon, outside the octagon. Yeah. And like for someone like you, you got it's like it's like respecting your elders. You got to respect Absolutely, people yeah. that paved the way for you to fight in this octagon. But uh, but look, in, an, in another way, look, it was a great unanimous decision win for Cortez. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look. Uh, but look, even another thing that shocked me, Olofsky, great chin on him, man. He, does. he was getting hit with some big shots. Yeah, he, had, he, he got hit by big punches. Like, big shots, man. Big, big shots. And it's like, as you age, your chin starts to wear off. Yeah, I've exactly. seen it with a lot of fighters. I've seen it with Tony Ferguson yeah. when he got knocked out against Chandler. Just old age wears out your chin, and I'm surprised he actually he's still got a chin on him. He actually does, and he's still got enough and tank like enough he's got, tank he's got in a, him. Yeah, he does. But he does. it's just those click punches like through the face. I don't know how he didn't get he dropped. Copping him. He was copping him. He was copping him real copping hard. Him. Yeah. So that's why he didn't perform the best in the octagon. Yeah. That's why Cortez won the fight by unanimous decision in round yeah. three. Yeah. So that that's a good win. Anyways, by him. moving but on. Next fight. Yeah. The Wars next fight. versus Ferreira in the middleweight division. Yeah. So Before, Ferreira. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I was saying, yeah. oh, sorry about that. Yeah. But um, Phil Hawes was actually fighting a few fights before. He had a couple of wins. Yeah. And he had uh, the previous win as well. Yeah. And plus Jacob Malkoon, like he got yeah. defeated by Phil Hawes. Yeah. But this a Brazilian fighter, Bruno Ferreira. It wins like was wins dangerous. Round one, knockout. That I could not believe brutal, my brutal. own eyes yesterday. Just, did you see? Did you see Hawes uh, walk out to the Rock theme song? Yeah, I couldn't believe. I was very <laughs> surprised. I'm like, out of all, I was like, where's the Rock? I was like, where's, like, where's Johnson? Dwayne Johnson? Like, usually he'll be in the building <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the UFC. But um, but you know, big uh, big shout out to Bruno Ferreira. Like, he, yeah. he his performance was really really good. Um, 
He uh, he had control time one minute thirty seven seconds yeah. on the floor. The takedowns. Yeah, he got two takedowns in. He round actually one. had two takedowns. So he did good on the ground. So yeah. that was really impressive. Um, uh, he, he even, actually stepped up. Yeah, he actually pretty stepped no, up. No, hundred percent, man. Look, Ferrer has eleven wins, eleven KOs, a hundred percent finish rate. Yeah, he actually did. Eleven wins, eleven knockouts. Did you see that that spinning back fist? Oh yeah, that, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, like I thought he knocked him out completely, but he, he Phil Hall still like he stood like stood up. Yeah, but I, I was I'm just surprised. But usually, like you know, the back spinning fist usually yeah. people get knocked. See the ground? Did you see the ground and pound? Yeah, that was after. That was mad. And he, when he, he he clips him on the behind the ear, and I think the, on the yeah. left side of him, drops him, and then the ground ground and pound was worse, man. But, that was but, actually worse. But, but it's like it was like a jackhammer hitting him. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't believe it. But um, anyways, next one, Simon versus Bautista. Yeah, so Ricky Simon versus Mario Bautista. I think that was the performance of the night. Bautista wins via unanimous de- yeah. decision. That that was tough as hell, man. Yeah. That that was like, they all punching, clicking to each other. Like, and no one did a good job. It was, hey? it was for the ranked position. Yes. So Bautista was fighting for that ranked position spot in the bench. But that, I liked about Ricky Simon, that big, massive takedown when he grabbed him up. Oh, yeah. All the way to the, the other side of the octagon. And yeah. bang, down. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but look, um, I think at, at the start of that fight, Bautista was trying to land those, um, those knees. No, he was yeah. trying to land those flying knees. Yeah. And in a way, he was getting caught with punches from doing that. Yeah. But he was only doing that so that way um, he doesn't get taken down to the ground. Uh, he even said that earlier in the week. But um, look, but so Simon was having su- uh, he was having having success on the ground. Yeah, got four ta- four takedowns. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, but it was just it's crazy about the Benamway division. They don't yeah. fatigue, man. They as the fight went on, stop. They don't as stop. the fight went on, that vo- the volume of punches just did not stop. But Mario Batista's defense was good. Yeah, he always getting out of it too. Yeah. He, he but, got a lot of but he had a lot of um, uh, significant strikes. He had 108 significant strikes more yeah. than Ricky Simon. So yeah. Ricky Simon had 56 yeah. uh, significant strikes. So. Yeah. Mario Batista actually stepped up to his game, yeah. but he balanced it really good in the octagon too. So look, he's got a ranked position spot. He now. actually did. He's trying to fight for that title, man. Trying to, he's trying to climb his way up to um, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Yeah, so it's going to take him a bit of yeah. a time, but yeah. he, I know he's going to be a better fighter, yeah. and he's going to be getting more big fights. He's a, he's a great fighter, man. I, I think for me, if Mario Batista wants to step up to the game, yeah. I think he should be going to the uh, main cards. You know I mean, mean, it's up to Dana. It's up to yeah. the matchmakers. It's up to Dana, but even I would his, love to see him in the main cut. Even his counterpunching, I yeah. noticed from Batista, is great, man. The way he counterpunch shots, it's like yeah, he's he's he could he's going to make waves in the division. No, oh, no doubt about it. Absolutely, he he will step up for yeah. sure. But um, we're going to talk about the next fight. I was actually very happy about Jim Miller. Yeah, Jim Miller, the veteran, forty years old. Forty years old. What a performance! Let's let's go through it. Miller wins via round three re naked choke. Look, let's let's look at the stats. This is his UFC stats. Miller's 40 years of age, 26 most wins in the UFC, 43 fights the most in the UFC, um, and the second most finishes in the UFC. This bloke's done it all. He's got a lot of accolades to his name. Veteran in the game. Veteran, he, mate. He's actually the like the biggest veteran yeah. as well. What do you think of the fight? The fight was like perfection. Good leg kicks, uh, good combinations. He was def- His defensive was really good too. Yeah. He had a good takedown as well. Um, when when it came to round three, he actually uh, tapped out uh, Gabriel Benitez. I don't know how to pronounce it, yeah. but he actually uh, controlled the whole fight. Benitez, so, G- Benitez, I Benitez. Think. Benitez, 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 Benitez. <laughs> I can't say it. It's all good. <laughs> no, but Jim good. Miller, yeah. what a hell of a performance by him! Um, and he actually caught out one of the commentators uh, to fight for UFC three hundred. If Miller, he, no, Miller called out um, Brock. Uh, didn't he call out Brock Lesnar UFC three hundred? No, nah, caught out Brock Lesnar, Jamila. Yeah, didn't you see Come the? On. Didn't you see the post fight interview? No, he caught out one of the commentators. Yeah, Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Paul Felder. Yeah, Paul Felder. He wants but to. But he also caught out Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar as a joke. Yeah, I oh know it was a joke. I you can never tell. know. Maybe there's something <laughs> to it. Maybe Dana White and talks to Brock Lesnar. Like Brock Lesnar, who knows, man? You'll see three hundred. not shaping up to be a good card. But anyways, that fight, yeah. man, Miller. Even at his old age, those leg kicks were hitting, mate. He was throwing everything into those leg kicks. Yeah, you that, could, the you snap could tell. kicks were so dangerous. Yeah, that's what I love about can, it. You can tell ben- Benitez was getting affected by those leg kicks. He actually did, but um, but even Benitez, he, he became too predict- predictable in that fight. He's trying to, he was trying to land those one-two combos way too many times in that yeah, fight. Yeah, but he and just seemed, he just seemed very, very yeah, weak. And Miller, moment. Miller saw right through it, man. The veteran in him, but um, yeah, look, like, like, it was a great fight, man. I, I'm happy with you. Like you think that at 40 years old, Dana White's usually the one to be like, all right, at 40, mate, it's you time retire, to think yeah. about retirement. But I think he's still got enough to take in him. But mate, he's, I he's in talks to fight at UFC 300. I know. The biggest, the biggest card of the year, biggest card in like, 
Like you know what I mean? It's a big UFC three hundred is um is UFC's WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a big card, and for him to fight on that card, even even if it's on the prelims, a hundred percent. And this is why there's a lot of UFC veterans, a few of them that are coming out of retirement, they want to pl- a fight in the octagon for yeah. UFC three hundred. Yeah. So I, rem- I I told you off camera that Brock Lesnar is actually coming out of retirement, yeah. and he wants to fight in the UFC three hundred. Brock Lesnar, and, yeah, Brock Lesnar. Oh, you just you you were just shocked by the news. Yeah, I was shocked by the news because I'm excited. For him to fight, yeah, in the yeah. UFC but you're saying that you have you heard of news that he's going to come out of retirement? I think it is true. So, but they're trying to find out who he's going to be his his opponent. I have no idea who. Well, so we'll uh, find uh, out if we got to find out who it is. Yeah, but Jim Miller, but look, it won't happen. Look, you know, yeah. just looking at this, man. Jim, but, uh, Jim no, Miller's in the Jim. Look, hold on. No, Jim, Jim Miller actually. Jim Miller's in the lightweight division. He is in the lightweight division. Why is he calling? It's obviously a joke. Yeah, no, he's, he's calling out Brock Lesnar heavyweight. Yeah, I, I, I just, I no, just, but, I just clocked that now. I didn't think about. Yeah, that. I know, but he said in the after the fight, he actually yeah. said there's still three months to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said I want to get back to the gym, yeah. get back to my fitness, yeah. and he's I want to yeah. fight for uh, a fight in the UFC yeah. card, like for three hundred. Yeah. I think he has a fair point. Yeah, he could, I, I would love to see him right, on the um, cards. Yeah, so. well, we could see it, but let's talk about the main event: Ankalaev versus. Johnny Walker too. Wow. The first one. Let's talk about the first one that has that had that the controversial knee yeah. that happened and whatever. Um, about the concussion uh, when Johnny Walker. Um, yeah, about the desert. Where are you? Yeah. The, desert, the, the confusion <laughs> yeah. there. But um, look, Ankalov proves he's why he's dangerous. better than Johnny Walker. Yeah. He finishes him in round two. What do you think of the fight, Anthony? He was so dangerous, man. He yeah. like Johnny Walker. He had a lot of you know those high kicks and uh, yeah. spinning kicks and he, he was. Yeah. I think he was a bit cocky, a bit like exactly. In that first he minute. didn't give Ankalov the respect. He yeah, deserved. he didn't. Yeah. But Ankalov, what a tough man, bro. I'm actually actually a big fan of him after that fight yesterday. Yeah. He controlled that fight. Oh, very oh, this 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 bloke is. I'm surprised he was on a fight night card. Yeah, like, I, I was very surprised. Usually he's in the main cards too, but yeah, but for him yesterday to beat and Johnny Walker exactly with that right hook. Oh, wow. oh man! Like, look, talking about the fight. Yeah, Johnny Walker again just didn't respect his abilities. He's he trying didn't to that. do those spinning back fists. He was trying to taunt him. He was a uh, look. He's, he's very unorthodox the way he fights yeah. Johnny Walker. We know we know the way he fights, but um. But he should have gave him a bit more respect. But why I'm saying why is Ankalaev on a fight like card? Look, Ankalaev has the fourth longest active unbeaten streak with 12. He's yeah. right under Islam Makachev. That, that's so, crazy. like, this bloke, he will get a shot at the title. Uh, who's who's he light, will, he who's will light heavyweight champion? Pereira. Pereira. So he's going to gun for it for sure. So I reckon he could win the belt. I think he can. I reckon he can. I think he beat Alex Pereira this for bloke, sure. Like, just he. he Obliterated Johnny Walker. You know what? Because like with these new fighters, like I know the people coming all over the world, like yeah. to become a champion one day. But if you can tell by Ankle Live, this bloke, this bloke's dangerous in the light heavyweight division. Yeah, all these Russians, all these Dagestanis are. No, I know. But see how he broke his nose, Johnny Walker. Yeah, that, that, I was that very up, surprised. That uppercut was scary, man. That was scary. That uppercut, he drops him and then he lands. And with that right hook, and then he punched him again with you that see nose. See Johnny Walker cover up his face. Yeah, he actually did. He could see it was done. <laughs> but, well, man. But I want to see Ankalai versus Pereira for that light heavyweight uh, title. Very I reckon he'll win it. I reckon it'll be. It's going to happen very soon, but I think he is going to. What is he now? He's. I well, think no, no. I think he's got a first. Who's uh, who's under Pereira before he get? He's got another fight before Pereira. Who? Who's who's second on the um light heavyweight ranking? I actually find out for you on you. I think see. it's um, uh, it's not Prochaska. Uh, no, it is uh, oh, Yuri check, Petrovsky, check, I think. I think fact, it is fact, Yuri. Check me, man. I, I don't think. It, I, don't, I don't think it is. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go to go light heavyweight. Go light heavyweight rankings. Light heavyweight. So uh, yeah, Yuri Petrovsky is ranked number two. Number two. Who's yeah. number three? Uh, Magomed Ankalaev. Ankalaev. Sure? I thought. I thought yeah. I so he's yeah. ranked number three so could, in the light yeah. heavyweight division. Yeah. So after Yuri that lost his fight against um, Alex Pereira. I would love to see maybe they'll pull it for the interim uh, light heavyweight. Do you think it'll be better to do that? No. I, I, w- I would love to see it personally. Yeah. But I think uh, Magomed Ankalaev, I think he should step up now yeah. and he should get his opportunity right now. Yeah. So for me personally, I think Ankalaev, he's going to go for that light heavyweight title. And, he, and he's got I, a good I chance sma- at it. I want him to smash Alex He's got Pereira. a good chance at it. He has a good chance. But, um, yeah, moving on, Anthony. UFC 297 is happening this week. Yep. Let's, um, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do our predictions for the co-main and the main. Yep. You want to start off with the co-main, Anthony? Um, so the co-main event will be the women's fight. So we got the bantamweight division. Um, we got Ra- Raquel Pennington versus uh, Mayra Berno Silva from Brazil. So, do you think, well, how do you think that fight goes? Um, to be honest, they're both good fighters. The Brazilian one, she's very dangerous. Yeah. Um, uh, but she lost the last fight against uh, Holly Holm. Yeah. It was overturned. Yeah. Um, maybe it could change around that she might win the title for the bantamweight. Yeah. 
But I can see Raquel Pennington, uh, she's the favourite. She's on the fight, uh, five fight winning streak. So I'm going to go for Raquel Pennington uh, to retain the title. Yeah, I think I'm going to solve with you. I'm going to go Raquel Pennington. Um, yeah, I think she should be too strong. Yeah, I think she's going to be very strong. She's still on the streak. Yeah. I hope it stays that way. Yeah. So I think she's going to win that. Yeah. Anyways, uh, uh, let's the go main, main event. event. The main event will be the biggest one of all. I can't wait for this one. And I know he's the biggest shit talker and I love him to death. Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland versus uh, Drake's uh, Duplessis. Drake's Duplessis. Like, that's yeah, what I yeah. say. South, South, South African <laughs> fighter. Um, yeah, how do you think that fight goes, Anthony? Um, look, I'm going to stick with Sean Strickland. After the big uh, win against... Uh, Israel Adesanya. That yeah. was a big shocking moment of the year. Yeah, that's so right. No one expected it. I didn't expect it. Go look at my reaction video. Yeah, I, know. I, I saw was it. like, this bloke's <laughs> going to be a trash can. He's going to be walkover for Adesanya. But Man, I'm look. not a big fan of Duke, uh, Drake's Duplessis. Like, I know he's a bit of a, he has a bit of a, in his mouth. Like, he's a big yeah. shit talker as well. Same as but Sean, Sean Strickland. Strickland. But I, I'm looking forward to the press conference oh, when he gonna... talks all that smacking yeah. and all that shit. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, Sean Strickland, when he starts, he's not going to stop yeah. at all. Nah, so, but talking about the four, Anthony. Yeah. Um, I, 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 look, Drikas is on a six-fight winning streak. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't lost in the UFC yet. I'm very surprised. He's finished four. He's finished his, his opponents four times, um, and he's only went to the uh, to the judges once. So you can tell this this guy is you don't want to you don't want to mess with this guy, man. Um, it's going to be a hard task, I reckon, for Sean Strickland. Yeah, Sean Strickland is known to um, not throw punches on the back foot. Drikas Duplessis is known to be on that front foot and throw a lot like high volume of punches. Yeah, um, we see it in in many of his fights, man. Um, and, and even his last fight against Robert Whitaker well, as well. He, he, no, he knocks him out. Yeah, he knocks I was out very Robert surprised. Whittaker. I, I was very pissed. Robert Whitaker, man, like. Like, I, 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 was I, didn't, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, I, I didn't see it coming and too. I was watching it that fight yeah. as well. I was very surprised. Robert Whitaker controlled the whole fight yeah. with Drakus Duplessis. Yeah. Yeah. Good kicks, combinations, takedowns, and all that. But when Drakus Duplessis shocked the whole world that he beat Robert Whitaker, one of the best yeah. Aussie fighters, I was but, like, yeah. But why I say, why I say, um, he's not great on the back foot, Sean Strickland. You saw his fight against uh, Jared Cannonier. Jared you, Cannonier, yeah. You saw in that in that fight against him where. He, was, he got put on that back foot and you saw him struggle, man. You saw him struggle. Yeah, and, he did struggle and, for those few, and first few Sean minutes. Sean Strickland yeah. is known to have that style of fighting where he tries to parry as, he, as his defense mechanism. It could pose as a threat in the fight, um, especially when you got Drakus coming on that front foot. He's, Drakus is a fighter, a fighter, he fighter. Is, yeah. he, he's not going to stop until he wins. When you got that coming at you and you're going to have Sean Strickland struggling, not knowing what to do, it's going to be hard. But if it goes to the ground, Sean Strickland does have an advantage there. Absolutely. Yeah. He'll get straight back up and pick up where he left off. Um, and he's, he's a great grappler. We all know Sean Strickland is great on the ground. Um, but I don't, know, I don't know who wins this, man. I, I, I really I'm, I'm sticking know. with the champion, uh, Sean Strickland. I'm going to say, look, and look, another, another factor I want to point out is Duplessis' is cardio. Yeah, he's he kinda, hasn't he hasn't fought in a five round fight yet. Yeah, so this is a true test for him. But Sean Strickland has. Yeah, he's I think, been, he's, I think he's I think he's had three three fights. Like um, lasted five rounds. No, he's he's had three. I think four fights. Four fights in a five round wow. five round uh, main event. Four yeah, fights. Well, so he's got ex good. he's got experience there, Anthony. There you go. But Drakus doesn't have experience. So how how does he do in a five round fight? Who knows? How's he gonna last? You know what I mean? Thing, like yeah. how's his we we. Because even Drakus, we know his cardio isn't the best. Not up to part, man. Yeah, we see, we see level, him breathe yeah. he heavy in fights. But Sean Strickland does. Sean Strickland, what, he's saying he does have good cardio? Yeah, he does. He probably yeah. he does. He's, but he does have good cardio. He's got experience. But his punches are have, dangerous too. He spars heaps, yeah, he Sean does. Strickland. So when you're sparring, man, it's different than normal training. You're pushing your limits. And he has that more experience and as more well. More experience in a five round of fight. Because Drakus Duplessis is uh, new. Look, That's my, my bad. I, I messed <coughs> up with one of the, the statistics. So Strickland is four to one in five round <coughs> fights. Yeah. Four to one in five round fights. So he's so he's, he's won four times and lost once in a five round of fight. And Duplessis has went to a decision. This is my point I was making before. Once out of five times. So yeah. five times he's knocked out his opponents. He's only went one time to decision. Yeah. So how this fight turns out, I don't know, man. I'm, I, I think, look, I think Drikas, if he can get it done early, he's a threat he in the can, early yeah, rounds. Early, early rounds. I think Drikas gets it done round three. Well, KO. I, I, I'm I gonna, think KO's, KO's Sean Strickland. I, I think Sean Strickland... Uh, I don't know, probably round three. I'll, I'll probably say round two. So you're saying Sean I'm going to say Sean Strickland round two by right. TKO. Fair enough. I'm saying Drake's Duplessis to win the belt and bring it to Af Africa. I think it happens. I we'll think it will happen. Out. But we'll um, anyways, uh, let's move on. Something news that came out over the break. Conor McGregor announces on New Year's 
that he's going to be fighting Michael Chandler at 185 pounds, which I'm not sure if that's confirmed. I know he's fighting him at International Fight Week. That's his, that's confirmed in June. So that's what we'll talk about why it's not at UFC 300 yeah. and if UFC stuffed up there. Yeah. But what do you think of this fight? Anthony? We talked about this fight many times. Yeah. But what do you think of this fight potentially happening at 185 pounds? I don't know, man. It's just very, very, uh, I don't know. About Michael Chandler, like it's the outer the outer heavier weight class. So they both fought at lightweight, the natural weight. Now they're going up to one eighty five. It's middleweight, middleweight division. It's a middleweight yeah. division. So it, it's yeah. how I, do you think this fight turns out? I think they should stay in the same division the way how they're the lightweight been. division. In the lightweight division. I think it should be. But look, uh, let's talk about. Look, do I think do I think McGregor has an advantage in, in a heavier division? I'm not sure, man. I, I don't think so. We've seen him struggle. Even even at one seventy, when he faced Nate Diaz, we've seen him struggle with cardio. Him not, being heavier, yeah. he's gonna he's gonna need more oxygen in those muscles. It's just not. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not Nate Diaz too. You got Dustin Poirier. Um, who else that he lost against as no, well? No, I'm saying at a heavier weight, oh, heavyweight division. division. At one seventy, we've seen him struggle, with McGregor. Yeah, he actually did. So he's gonna even struggle even more at one eighty five. I don't know about Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler will be. Fit. I don't know if he's gonna be better at a heavier weight. But class, he's but still I'm, he's still gonna knock him out for sure. Who Chandler? I don't sure. know, but I'm talking about the weight. I don't. I, I think that's he's confusing. Just, that I think one. he's just toying with him. I don't mm. think it's at one eighty five. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be happening like that. From I the hope beginning. it's not at one eighty. They should stay in their same weight, like lightweight, I said, same division, division, lightweight division. Yeah, that, that's what it's yeah. meant to be. Yeah. Okay, but for like for this fight that's happening, we've been saying it the last few podcasts like a million times. I, I'm sticking with Michael Chandler. I know he's going to dominate yeah. Conor McGregor. Yeah. I, 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 I want to see Chandler dominate him. Look, you've heard my opinions about it. I'm going to once this fight is fully announced and they actually yeah. have a date and whatnot, then I'll. Then I'll, I'll then I'll say my predictions, man. Yeah, yeah. But um, another thing I want to bring up about this fight: Did you see stuff up by not putting this fight on UFC 300? UFC 300 is, as I said, the WrestleMania of the UFC. It's the biggest event. Yeah. Did they, Conor McGregor's ready. ready. McGregor's ready. Chandler's ready. They've been waiting. They've been itching for that fight. And look, why not put out UFC 300? Why do we got to wait another six months at International Fight Week to see That's the so fight? Important. I, it's, I think it's a big, it's a bad decision on bad Dana, Dana White's part. What I do think you it's think about a big that, mistake. I think, think it's about a, that? look. To be honest, if I was Dana White, I prefer putting them in that main cards in the UFC 300. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of fighters that they're going to be stepping up yeah. to be on that main card, yeah. and, and, like including titles like you know maybe the heavyweight title yeah. uh, it could be anyone doesn't and matter i think that's why it's not the not at ufc 300 because yeah you if you have mcgregor and ev any event you got to put him as the main event absolutely because so, he's the face as so, well of so UFC. for that reason i think dana white wants to have a big title match as yeah. the main event a five rounder no one wants to see it i mean we all want to see mcgregor fight ufc 300 if it was up to me you put him 300 oh, but at the same time um, Dana White wants a title fight, a five round title fight. He wants probably a double header as a title fight, but um, it's a, it's a, look because like considering UFC three hundred, the fights that have been announced, it's rubbish. UFC UFC two nine nine is better than UFC three hundred. Let's be fair. Out. Sugar I'll Sean's card, it. that whole card is you got Dustin Poirier in that card. You got Sugar Sean. Why is that? It's like Dana White. Mix them around. I know. It's like he it put UFC no 300 as UFC 299. And, and always, and not just that too, and there's always those one fighters that pull out because of like exactly. injury or, or personal issues yeah. or something. Yeah. And then that, that just screws Imagine up Imagine that thing. happens at UFC 200. That yeah. could even, that could, like who, what UFC 300 fights have been announced? Those, um, the two Chinese fighters uh, the in the women's oh, division. Oh, the women's division? It, that's a, oh, I forgot their oh, name. I forgot their name too. But, um, but look, there, there's talks of Bilal Muhammad and- um, Yeah, I heard about that. He's going to yeah, be stepping up. Versus Leon Edwards at the main event. That's going to be good one. I don't think that- I, I think if they announce that fight, a lot of fans are going to have a lot to say yeah, about that will. as the main event of UFC 300. Yeah. That'll, that'll be a slap in the face. You've been waiting all this time for UFC 300 for that to be the main event. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. Leon Edwards has no character. Bilal Muhammad, no one likes him in, yeah. in, in the UFC. He has no character. And look, I, I don't think- I don't think- I don't think that'll, that'll be a great main event for UFC 300. The only answer was McGregor versus Chandler. But Everyone's waiting for that. Make, Everyone's waiting for that moment to hit. That should have been UFC 300. 300. Yeah. But if I'm saying because Dana White needs to understand that the top fighters and top champions they want to be in UFC 300 in the main cards. Yeah. And even like how I said Brock Lesnar, he said that he's coming out of retirement. He wants to fight in UFC. Maybe I don't, it's not happening. It, I reckon it will happen. I don't happening. know. But look, if I would he, love to see if it he was ready. If he was hundred percent ready, he has to start training from now. No, no, no. If he was hundred yeah. percent ready, 
He's off for, like, I don't know how long it's been since he lost four in the UFC. It's been a oh, many years. I think many it's years. been about seven years, years, eight years. I would have still taken Brock Lesnar as the yeah. main event. I don't, like, I don't care. Like, it's going to be Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad, don't get me wrong. I respect the guy's ability. Yeah, yeah. He's got one of the longest active winning streaks yeah, in yeah. the UFC. But he's no character, man. How are you expecting, how are you expecting them to hype up a press conference, hype up UFC 300? Yeah. As that, that as the main event, it just doesn't make sense to me. Just I hope it's something's not, the main not event. right about football like, cards, bro. Who like, you gonna, other, other than that, that fight, who are you going to put as the main event? There's no one you could put as the main event to headline UFC to round you. I don't know. It, we're talking about this for too long, but yeah. um, let's move on to the boxing world. Anthony Joshua, it's been announced. Anthony Joshua versus that. Francis Ngannou happening at Saudi Arabia March in, in 2024 on March 8. Um, what do you think of this fight, Anthony? Um. To be honest, Anthony Joshua is coming back, like he's returning back. So I mean, he he, he won his last fight. He, he did couple, actually, did he? Uh, in December. Um, look, Francis Ngannou is coming off. Look, he didn't win after his, the loss against Tyson Fury. Uh, he's yeah. coming off coming off a loss, but he did drop Tyson Fury. Yeah, actually, and did. a lot of people do think um, Francis Ngannou won that fight. Like including myself in a way, but I get the way boxing is. I get how Tyson Fury did out jab him or yeah. whatnot on, on the stats board. But look, even if he loses against Anthony Joshua, to go zero and two next to the greatest boxers this generation has seen in Anthony Josh and Tyson Fury is a win in my opinion. Yeah. But who knows? I think I think Francis, Francis Ngannou has a great chance. Yeah, he's got power. Anthony he's Joshua. got a big power in him. Power, man. He's got Tyson, that, Tyson Fury. I think he's him. the perfect fit in the boxing uh, industry, yeah. like in the level oh, of boxing. Like the but transition he has from, massive yeah. power. In that. And don't forget when he was in UFC, bro, he was dangerous. Dangerous. Everyone loved the battle. Look, like, if, we're, if we're talking yeah. about, again, Tyson Fury, how we knocked out yeah. the heavyweight champion of the world. No one does that, man. No one never does no that. No one goes from MMA to boxing. Not once and in a lifetime that will happen. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, but Francis and Ghana will do it. And why this is, why this will be. Um, not a tougher fight for Francis Ngannou is Anthony Joshua has a weak chin where we, we've seen his chin get tested. Um, and look, I think the only part of victory for Anthony Joshua is if he outboxes him. And that's probably what will happen. It'll probably yeah. go to a de decision win for AJ. And I, I just I just know how boxing works. Everyone knows how boxing works. He's going to outbox him. He'll probably win the fight. But in a way, as I said, if he goes 0-2 next to the greatest boxers this generation has seen, it's a win for Francis Ngannou. Absolutely, yeah. But, yeah, that's but who do you yeah. think will win? Uh, Anthony I, Joshua. I think, I think I truly think Francis Ngannou wins. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Francis I'm Ngannou. Ngannou. As well, so. But um, last last thing for combat talk for this week, Anthony. Um, George Kambosis. It's been announced. George Kambosis versus Lon Machenko for May 12, 2024, for the IBF lightweight championship. <sighs> I, I'm gonna say this. Yeah. I'm gonna say this straightforward. Yeah. George Kambosis. We, we all respect him, right? Yeah. But he needs to get better and step up now. Yeah. Bro, because he's got the light heavyweight title on the line and he's the challenge. He wants to win it. He wants to win he back needs the to win it. Yes, that's right. It's important because he's lost twice against uh, Javante Davis. No, so uh, Devin, uh, Devin Haney. Uh, Dave, uh, Devin, Devin Haney. Uh, Devin Haney, sorry. So my, his my last apologies. fight uh, yeah. was Max Hughes. It was uh, a lot of people were saying he Locked lost that it. fight. He In did. a way, maybe, I don't know, you could say that. Yeah, yeah. But um, he really needs to win this fight and it's a hard task for him. Lomachenko is not a walk in the park, mate. Yeah. He really isn't. He's dangerous a boxer too. But so. mad respect to George Kambosis, bro. Yeah. He's, go look at his resume. He's faced Devin Haney twice, Max Hughes. He's going to face Lomachenko now. He's, he's not afraid to step up to the challenge, yeah. but I'm scared for him in this fight. I'm very, very scared. If he yeah. truly loses this fight, it's done for him in the elite I level. I think it's done. It's yeah. done for him in the elite level. He won't, maybe he won't gun for a championship no more. Absolutely. But it's yeah. a tough fight, but early, early predictions, I'm saying Lomachenko wins, man. I, yeah, I just I'm going to go have L L Lomachenko. But hopefully well. George Kambosis. If George Kambosis can surprise yeah. everybody, then yeah. we'll wait and see. But um, anyways, that's about it for Combat Talk for this week. Till next week. Now we're going to move on to some football talk. That's astonishing. Oh. It's all right, Shabelle, back with some football talk. Uh, been a while, but we'll get right into it. First of all, Arsenal, are yeah. they out of the title race? You know, they've got one win in seven games out of the FA Cup, out of the Carabao Cup. What are you, what's your thoughts Look, on them? It hasn't been quite gone to plan in recent weeks. Uh, out of the FA Cup, Carabao Cup out a couple months ago. We've got a Champions League match coming up soon next month against Porto. That'll be a tough game considering uh, Ateta's Europa, uh, European statistics haven't been quite well uh, since joining the club but yeah it's not looking good I don't think it's a end of a chapter for Arsenal and Arteta I still think there's so much to give and the season's not done yet we're only round 20 and round 20 halfway into the season still 18 games left to play so I, I still think there's a long long way to go and I, I believe this Dubai trip this is a moment where we have to gather together just enjoy ourselves of course train hard because last 
two months we haven't been the best. Yeah. And it's important that Arteta gets everything right in this preseason, uh, this break, I should say. I think Ramsdale has to come back. I don't think David Ray has done... He has, he's had a few mistakes. He hasn't been the worst. Mm -hmm. But I still think that Ramsdale has showed enough he, look, Ramsdale, as I said in multiple pod, that he has not done anything for him to be to be dropped. You look at, uh, let's go with Zinchenko. He does mistakes here and then, and he still plays so many plays in that team. Look, Saka has been performing in six weeks, yet he still remains in that squad. So I think changes must be made. Ramsdale in the squad. Uh, I think Trossard, because Jesus is injured, Eddie's not the solution. If we don't get a striker, I think Trossard has to be the main guy up front because he does create that fluidity in the attacking role and we do perform well when he's, up, when he's playing that striker role. So yeah, lots of changes. I still, again, it's not over. I still think we're in the title race. Do I think we're going to win it? I'm not as confident as I was before, but we're still in the race. I think City will still edge it considering De Bruyne, that performance against Newcastle. He sing, just single-handedly won that game. Yeah. So De Bruyne there, Haaland's coming back. Liverpool, considering Salah's out, he could be out for at least a month and a bit. That could affect them immensely in their race for the title race. So it's going to be hard for us to win it. I'm not saying it's over, but it's a, it's a big task well, for us. Realistically, already you're not saying that you're out of the title race, but I don't think Arsenal will win it this year. And realistically, are you going to win the Champions League? Look, Champions look, League, it's all about... Prob probably not. Yeah. So l l let's just say you don't win the Premier League, you don't win the uh, Champions League. There goes another season with no, to no trophies. Now, personally for me, I think Arsenal should be happy where they are. I know be to, to be considered... Being successful to be considered as a big club, you're gonna need to win trophies. But I think where Arteta's brought Arsenal, I just think that Arsenal fans should be happy where they're at, where they're at. And I know how last season ended, um, how good you were. Of course, you want to be better. You want to, you know, go one step further to clinch the Premier League title. But I think again with Arsenal, I just think just be patient. I just think. Even if you don't get anything next year, give it, I think, another year. Just one more year to really see if Arteta is the man. If not, you get someone won the FA Cup to, to like get, get you over the line. Over line because FA Cup, look, it's been four seasons. We've been out fourth round, third round, fourth round. Uh, sorry, third, fourth, third, fourth round, yes, which is unacceptable. Yeah, very bad. We're seeming like Premier League guests... Don't get me wrong, we got challenged last year to towards the end until the last three games. It's just Arteta's so stubborn that the players he signed, he will not bench them for whatsoever. He's gonna play him until the end of the until the last game of the season. Havertz won't be dropped. Don't get me wrong, I think he's been a good signing for us. Yeah. I think I think he's been scapegoated. I've watched a few AFTV channels, Arsenal fan channels that they, don't, they think Havertz is a problem and has affected the way we've been playing. Yeah, apart, he is the reason. But I st still think he's shown enough, a bit of quality, what he can bring to the team. I'm not blaming Kim. I think he's been a solid 5 to 6 out of 10 since joining the club. But yeah, he's going to remain in the squad. Ray is going to remain in the squad. I don't think Ramsdale will join the team. I think he'll leave by the end of next year. So his stubbornness may affect us and may not get us to the Champions League final or winning the Premier League title but if he was to make those changes I do believe and getting that top top quality striker I do believe we can maybe win the league but Champions League look at Chelsea uh, when, back when they won against City they didn't have the best season in the Premier League yeah. but again they got that luck in the Champions League so nothing's over but it, like I said like uh, like I said before it's going to be a massive massive I just feel with the, the boys in our title with a manager that's stubborn I just feel you got to know when you've made a mistake to be yeah. to be a good coach, to be a good manager, you got to know when you make a mistake, and you got to you know accept that you've made a mistake. Yeah. If David Ray is a mistake, you got to accept that and move on. You know, maybe Ramsdale is the answer. Maybe Brian Raya is for the better for Ramsdale. For example, Man United, we have Onana, and I just feel he's very hesitant to dropping him because that's his signing. He wants to give him chance after chance after chance to to show the world and to show like also himself that he's made the right decision. For example, today we lost against Tottenham. He's playing Onana, who's supposed to be at the AFCON right now. And we made him stay for at least one more game. But when you look at it, he didn't help us today to get the win. You could debate that he should have saved the second one. So my point is that these managers are very stubborn in a way that they want to make sure that 
what they've done, the signings they've got are the right ones. Like, ba- uh, the, the second-hand goalkeeper, I think it's ba- Baden this. That's how you pronounce it. He's been there, sitting there for so many months, waiting for his opportunity. Onan hasn't been the best, but yet he's still in the team. Give him an, a chance. As I said, the good managers are the ones that, you know, are... Uh, they know when they make a mistake. So I just think with Arteta, he's just got to get rid of that stubbornness. And I think if he's more easy going, you know, okay, Ramsdale is better. Put him back into squad. And I think Arsenal start to slowly, slowly find their feet and, you know, push for the title. And quickly, before we move on to the next topic, you look at the signings we've made over the years. And again, I've, I've always told you that every signing Arteta's made has done pretty, like quite well. But when I look at it, when I sit down and think to myself, you look at, we signed Jakub Kivior, yeah. who joined the club as a backup centre back, yet we play him at left back and then straight into the second half, he subbed off. So yeah. there's Arteta signing, he doesn't trust him. You got Matt Turner, we signed him, backup keeper. He performed, He had a few performances that weren't good and he never played a game since those yeah. poor performances. And William, including Kim, we signed him, had a say, he played majority of the season, but again, he showed it, he never trusted him, and that's why he, towards the end, he dropped him. So these little key, key signings that he's making are affecting us, and that's why it's important we make sure we sign this right striker and make sure he's permanent for the next three to four years and not sell him next year. Well, now we move on to Newcastle United, who have been struggling. Six defeats in their last seven. Yeah. Um, when you look at Newcastle last season, they were really proved to be you know back to the Premier League giants, you could say. But again, this year they've fallen off. You could blame it on Champions League. You could blame it on the injuries. But now with Champions League done and dusted for them, their injuries is a problem. But I just feel... I, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going Funny on Funny thing you say that is that, remember before the season, we did say as our bold prediction Newcastle that Newcastle will miss, will miss out on top six. Yeah, or top because four. Because yeah. of Champions League. And that's the case. Uh, it's happened. But I think the reason why they're struggling... The injuries are big time. I don't think it's time. Eddie Howe. I think he's doing a great job. But the injuries have affected them. Yeah. You've got Joe Linton. He's been the recent player to be injured. Yeah. You've got um, the Souls. Yeah. You've got Wilson, who's up and down with um, Alexander Isak. Almiron just came back a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, just so Gordon's many. Gordon's been carrying Burns, an injury. Yeah, Burn is so. injured. Burn, yeah. So, so many Botman injuries. Has I feel it. bad for him. I think if Nick you had... Nick Pope's out. Yeah, Nick Pope's out. So, and it's a keeper. Yeah, when does a keeper yeah, get yeah. injured? So, I think... Newcastle United are a good team. I do think Eddie Howe is the man to bring them. I think they are back to the old days, not in regards to trophy-wise, but they're, they're building that good. foundation. Yeah. And if if it wasn't for those injuries, I think they would have been in the top four comfortably. Because last year they had one of the best defenses. They kept one of the most kept one of the most clean sheets yeah. in the competition. So they've got everything in in line. They've got a well um, structured board behind them yeah. so it just injuries has cost them and ruined their season yeah Newcastle United again Eddie Howe I think he's done a good job and I just think they're in a period now every club goes to a period where they're struggling and it could be for many reasons could be the manager could be injuries could be the players and Newcastle are falling into that that hole right now and I just think you know it, it's going to be a tough season for them but I think once those injuries come back they're going to be playing good football again and you know they could make a late search for top four they're like still they in the, their best in Champions League too yeah they're still in for European football but it, sometimes it goes to an extent where you can blame the injuries you know you got what you got you got to try and work with that no but look if it was like say two, three injuries, I, I get know, you have to work with out. it, but they've got a whole team out. So I think that is an excuse for them to say, "Oh, we've got majority of our team uh, injured." But yeah, I think. But the positive is that he's still getting the best out of a few of the signings. Like Look Gordon, at Anthony Gordon. Isak's hitting form Isak, now again. He's a clinical striker linked to Arsenal. Love to have a, have him at the club. But yeah, there's there's still positives, but. I think it's. I think the season is done because their injuries they've got is like long term injuries, yeah, yeah. like two months a month. So it's going to be hard for them to get Champions League, Europa League. Maybe I, I honestly think they'll get Conference League. Yeah, look, because yeah. Europa League you've got United in the race, you've got West Ham are in, doing incredibly well, Brighton, Brighton still yeah. in the race. So these tough teams, I think, right now are better than Newcastle. Yeah, so yeah. it's a, a long task for them. But we move on to Sancho. Um, a couple of days ago, he joined Dortmund, and he's recently played. Uh, the first game for Dorman actually, and he got an assist. Yeah, but let's talk about his time at United. Of course, he joined. Lots of hype around him, uh, and then it didn't really turn out to be the best f- 
first season for him at United. Second season, Eric Ten Hag was there. Had a f- good start no, to yeah, his season under Ten Hag. With Ralph Ragnick too. Yeah, that's, sh- that's um, true. But towards the end, in the second season, specifically for Sancho and Ten Hag, had a few of uh, yeah. discussions yeah. and that. Problems, yeah. Problems and that, and it, it, it didn't work out. Who's the blame? Is it Aaron Ten Hag? Is it the board? Or is it Sancho? Look, for, for me, look, I see it this way. Sancho came in um, and let, remember, like, Sancho came in, Ten Hag let him go off for, like, a three-month break because he was going through a lot. Like, I think mental health was a problem for him. And as a coach and also as a friend, he gave him that time off in which he, you know, he, he, he got that. <laughs> And respect to Tenak for doing that because sometimes a lot of managers may not do that, may not, oh, no, we need you, we need you to help us, you know, get top four, win games, blah, like, etc. But he helped him a lot. He helped him a lot. And then when you come back and you, you're late to training, which is a big thing in soccer, managers don't accept that. It may be once, but if you keep on doing it, it's a big problem. And there has to be discipline. As a coach, you've got to put your, like, Foot down and, you know, say, I'm the boss. If you're late, you're late. You're going to get punished. You miss a game. It could be anything. And so Sancho, Sancho was stubborn. Sancho coming out and basically telling Ten Hag that he's a liar and all that and saying some things that you shouldn't be saying as a player. You've got to be professional about it. And, again, that put even more stress on him, put more, like, like all the news articles, media were all on him, all on this top co- – Topic. Every press conference was about Sancho Ten Hag. What's happening? And personally, for me, I'm with Ten Hag because again, he gave him, you know, that break off, and it just shows that he he had a good relationship with him, and he he, he was a good manager. It's not like you no, know, I don't like this player at all. I want to get rid of him. He gave him those opportunities, and again, when you're running late, when you're not following the rules, you're gonna get punished. And I think with Ten Hag. Especially even Sancho. Sancho's had problems with many, many clubs. Dortmund City happened. Did. City had yeah, problems. as a kid. Even the video came out. He was late to his medical in for yeah. Dortmund. So that just shows it's in his nature, DNA, that he's always late. So I'm look. I'm. I I don't. I think Sancho should have apologized because you don't come out and say that about a manager. Yeah. Even if you're not directing at him, you're indirectly doing it. And no matter what it is, you got to respect the manager. But then people can see it as a Ren- look what happened to Ronaldo. I was about to say Everyone that. Everyone said Ronaldo. that Ronaldo's the problem. But he wasn't. And in that case, I support Ronaldo for that case because Ronaldo was not the problem at all. Ten Hag, you know, wanted to force him out and it, that turned out to be a big, big problem. In that scenario, again, I stick with Ronaldo. But in this particular situation, I'm always sticking with Ten Hag because he, he treated him well, but then he he wasn't following the boss's rules and again when you don't follow the boss's rules or just in general everything's going to happen anyways hopefully Sancho it works out for him at Dortmund I'm pretty sure United fans do like him yeah. he's a respect, respectable player he's a great player has a great future still at a young age so hopefully he does succeed at Dortmund but before we wrap up the podcast uh, we've got this new segment called Rate or Hate It basically it's a uh, Summer signings uh, from the Premier League this season. A, a, a few from European signings as well, considering it's, we're already halfway in the season. So we said, why not rate or hate these uh, summer signings? So first of all, we've got Declan Rice. Um, I'll say rate it. He's been one of the Arsenal's best player, probably the Premier League signing of the season so far. So yeah, I'll rate it. What would you rate it? I'll rate, oh yeah, sorry. Um, I'll so give it a solid solid 8 out of 10. For me, I'm... Um, I rate it and I'm going to go for a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10? Okay. Uh, we'll go for Kai Havertz. For me, look, I just told you about my rating on him. He's been inconsistent. I think in recent weeks he has been better. He scored a few goals. He's, he's got four Premier League goals back to like back. Yeah, in like four games weeks, in yeah, seven yeah. he scored. So I think it's not doom days for Arsenal or mm. Kai Havertz. I still think he can work out on Arsenal. I think he's a. I think it's. I'm not going to say Ray or hate it. I think I'm just going to go middle at this point. I think it's a 5 out of 10. Yeah. Look, I'm going to say hate it. I don't think it's worked out to how Arteta wanted it. I don't think Havertz is doing that bad, but I know he can do a lot better. Even at Chelsea, we didn't see the best of him. So I'm scared, even with Timo Timo Verda, some plays aren't meant for the Premier League. So I'm going to rate it a a 5 out of 10. I'll say 5 out of 10. Fair enough. Hoyland. Look. Hoyland Champions League, he was at one stage the top goal scorer. 
He has a potential back-to-back -back goals now in the Premier League. He's building his confidence. I know there's a good play in him. Just the way he builds up the play, he holds up the ball, his strength, his finishing, that finish against Tottenham was crazy. Like, the power on that was exceptional. Um, but again, he just, he's now starting to click. I'm going to say, of course, I'm going to rate it because it's, you know, I, I know there's a good play in him. I'm going to give him a solid, I'll give him, I'll give him a six, an average. Look, I haven't watched much of Hoyland, but to get top goal scorer in the Champions, Champions League, League yeah. for a team that really struggled and finished last in the group stage speaks a lot of what type of player he is. Look, again, I haven't watched him a lot. I'd say Raider, but it's going to be like a five and a half. Okay, five, fair enough. Uh, Doku? Look, I think he's a good player. City, good player, good signing. Every year they sign a player that just starts to become yeah, yeah. a first, first starter in their team. I'll rate it. Do Doku, yeah, I'll rate Seven it. I think it's a... Uh, when he started, he's the, he's offered a lot. He's got a sister or goal. I think Doku is an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to give him a 7. Uh, Bellingham, of course. 10 Bellingham out of 10. Been, yeah, 10 out of 10. 10 perfect out of 10. scoring in every game. Champions League, yeah. even um, La Liga. What a signing he's been like. He's probably been one of the best signings in like... The past Look, decade. I think he's, he's, the, he's, he's the best player in the world right now. Best player in the world right now, probably. Um, probably top three. Is he 19 only? No, he's 20. Maybe 20. Something maybe like 20. That. But still, I think he's personally probably. It, even Harlan is up there as the best signing of yeah, the yeah, decade. Because yeah, yeah. past 10 years, you don't get a lot of the big like signings that just hit it right Maybe into it's Harlan, I think, some like what you said, some Harlan's signing of the century or whatever. Decan, yeah. Decade, decade sorry. because. Premier League is hard to do yeah, it. Yeah. If Bellingham wants to be at Liverpool right now and scoring goals, because Harlem broke, if, yeah. was the first player to get 50 goals. Yeah, so yeah. that's hard to do in yeah, the Premier but League. But Bellingham's so still up there. Yeah, so 10, 10 out of 10. 10. Uh, Jao Pedro, um, he's a good player. I yeah. rate him a, a lot. Like his movement, he knows how to get around players. Um, even for Brighton, he suits the Brighton system very well. And I know with Webs, um, is his name? Webster. Webster, yeah, yeah. Webster. He's been coming in a bit. But now Jao Pedro's... Webster? I, can't, I think it is. There's but another name. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, um, Ferguson. That's it. Ferguson. Ferguson. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jao Pedro. He knows how to play with the system. Now he's starting to get a consistent run of games because I know I think Ferguson's injured. So Jao Pedro, he's scoring. He's on penalty duties, and I just feel he's a real threat when he's playing. So, I'll, I'll rate. I'll give it another. Se I think a seven. I I agree. Seven. Uh, we we'll go Harry Kane. I think a nine. It's worked out for Rated him. He's scoring goals. I'll give him a nine. Look, I saw this thing about Bay Lubikus and they're first on the table and they said Kane's curse is continuing. Kane? Because if Bay Lubikus and win, oh, yeah, he doesn't, top, win, he yeah, doesn't yeah. win the, the, the title. Year, yeah. But yeah, 9 out of 10 for Harry Kane. Uh, we've got Lukaku. 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 He's been all right. He's been He's good been decent. goals. Um, I'll rate it. I don't think it's it's been good. It's, it's been a, a decent rate, yeah. Six and a half. Oh, no, you know seven. I'll say seven. I'll say seven. Alex, look, we weren't going to put him, but I wanted to mention about Alex Iwobi. I think... During his time at Arsenal, look, he had good moments, he had bad moments. Just the one thing he lacked was his finishing. Yeah. He moved to Everton, wasn't the best, didn't really perform, but I think at Fulham, he's really found his form. And yeah. Why Arsenal fans hyped him when he first joined, like first bursted into the scene. Alex Wobie is performing, he's scoring goals, assisting, creating chances. It's I like Iwobi and have no hatred towards him. I think he's been a very, very good player. I think he's been a seven... Seven and a half out well, of ten. I've seen some lately. improvement for Wobi, like the way he plays. Um, I just feel he always brings that energy, and he's the one that's leading the attack. So I'm gonna give it a six out of ten. Six will go to Cole Palmer. He's yeah, he's been pretty good. I always, I've always said ten merchant. I feel I feel he's giving me Bruno vibes. He's gonna start off good. You remember Bruno stat yeah. padding goals, assist. He was a fantasy asset, but I feel eventually it's going to go up to a period where he stops doing all of that. But right now, as a signing, he's been very good. I'll eight. give it a, like an 8 out of 10. Yeah, uh, I'll go with this player because I've seen a lot from him. Alex Romaldo, he's, I think, one of the best left-backs right now in the world. No left-back has scored more goals than him or assisted. He's crazy. I'll, he's a fantastic player. And I honestly think he'll be at a big, big club soon, either like Real Madrid, Arsenal, now moving, we'll stick to my player. This is the player I've chosen, Alex Grimaldo. Fantastic player. He's the best left-back right now in the world. No left-back has scored more goals than him. I th honestly think he's going to sign to like a club like Real Madrid, Arsenal, some big club soon. He's just got everything. And you don't see a lot of left-backs like him these days. So I think 
his performances right now this in the Bundesliga is a nine out of ten. Yeah, I'll rate him too. I'll give him like a eight and a half yeah. out of ten. And finally, Kim Min Jae of Bayern. Uh, Man United were linked with him, and I I can. I can understand why they were linked with him. Very good player, solid defender. And he just brings that organisation in the back. Like he's a defender you want, either yeah. whether he's starting or just a backup. Yeah. He's he's the player you want as a centre back. And he's been very good for Bayern. So I'll give him a, a, a solid seven and a half. Well, anyways, that's a wrap to the football tour. Got a lot of talks done during this podcast. But now we're going to be with the boys ending the podcast. Anyways, I think that's a wrap to the Touchline Podcast, Season 2, Episode 55. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, especially in this lovely studio that we've got here. But if you're new around here, make sure you you hit the subscribe button, leave a like, comment down below, and yeah, we'll that's see you guys soon. Catch you guys later.